Good evening. It's 5.30. This is Highland Radio News with Mary Garvin. In this bulletin, the euphoria after the big match win as Donegal people take to the streets to welcome home their heroes in green and gold. Guardi in the county have issued an appeal for consideration and caution during the celebrations over the next few days. But the dream that has gripped Donegal for the past five weeks became real in Croke Park at two minutes to five yesterday afternoon when Anthony Malloy held the Sam Maguire Cup aloft and simply told the crowd we've done it. Commentating on Highland Radio yesterday afternoon, Michael McGee and Charlie Collins captured the euphoria of the moment. Fifteen teams have won all Ireland titles out of the 32 and new name. That of your tunnel will be on it. If Tommy Sugar play well for full time, it's 18 points to 14, that's not important, the game is nearly over. Tommy Sugar's looked at his stopwatch, call for the ball, referee, is it all over? Tommy Sugar, no. Is he yes, Billy Ball and the All-Ireland champion for 1992, they won it for the first time. There's a new name on the title, it's that of Billy Ball, 18 points to 14. Billy Ball men are on their feet in front of us. The Kinney brothers, Packy and Kieran, to my left, who have both played for the county, are hugging one another. Michael McGee, it's a great moment. Charlie, this is history, Charlie. We've been here in a historic game. Donegal joined the team, our Ulster counterparts down, who came here for the first time and conquered. We came here against all the odds we conquered. This is history, it's a historic day. We talk about the Battle of Clontarf. We talk about battles here, we talk about battles there. But when the history of Donegal has been written, the Battle of Coke Park on September the 20th, 1992, will be emblazoned across those pages. All talk of big match nerves dissolved as Donegal senior footballers faced up to cup favourites Dublin, eventually winning the All-Ireland final by 18 points to 14. Minutes after the team collected their medals, those who couldn't secure tickets thronged the streets of every town and village in the county. However, last night's celebrations were only a taste of the euphoria that will sweep Donegal tonight when the team return to what will be a hectic and tumultuous hero's welcome. The team is scheduled to arrive in Saigo by train at some stage after half past seven. The team will then travel to Donegal Town, stopping off at Bundorn at half past nine, Ballyshannon at half past ten and Ballantrae at half past eleven, arriving at the Diamond in Donegal Town at around half past midnight. OK, I'll come back to that in a moment, uh, Frank, because I think uh, Charlie is on the line. Hello, Charlie. Hello, Danny. I can just barely hear you, Danny. We're on the platform here at the Southern Hotel in Super Dunk in the wee mountain, Saban. You may be able to hear him just uh, finishing off the very from the road there. Just to get on the line, Danny, to tell you we've had news that the train is going to be a little bit late in, so perhaps people who are waiting in Valley Shannon, Bundoran and Donegal Town and travelling to some of those venues might be keen to know the train was due uh, just at 8.33 here, but the news has come through that the train will be about 15 or 20 minutes late. Um, just looking at the watch, it's about 17 minutes to 9. That means it should be coming in around 10 to or 5 to 9. But we just wanted to update people on the situation, Danny, that uh, things are running a little bit late here in Sligo, so that means that they're going to run a little bit late uh, through the evening. Well, it's no wonder, Charlie, that things are running late because I understand there are big crowds out to see the team all along the route there. Absolutely, Danny. Uh, um, I know that uh, a lot of people were anxious to get the train stopped along the route as well, but uh, you can understand that. But people were very keen to stop the train, but when that happens, it delays everything. So obviously that, that causes a problem as well. I just hand back to you, Danny, because uh, we're pretty close to speakers here, and it's pretty loud in our ears, so uh, Lou, I hope you can hear me. I'm having difficulty hearing you, so rather than... I wondered what you were saying and you wondered why I'm not answering you. We'll just hand it back for now, Danny. But as soon as the team arrives, we'll be back to you. OK, thank you very much, Charlie, for now. Danny, that, bye. Right, that was Charlie Collins uh, trying to get through to us there from Sligo. And uh, he says the train is delayed 10 minutes or a quarter of an hour. And uh, it's no wonder it is delayed because the crowds are coming out there in their throngs to wish to the Donegal team all the best. And, uh, well, we can certainly put up with a delay of 10 minutes or a quarter of an hour. It's not very often that we get the Sam Maguire coming to the... <laughs> the county <laughs> and uh, perhaps the next time we'll have it better yes. organized That's and right. we'll be spot on time the next time yes, around yes. I Find think it. Charlie Collins is back on the line again. Hello, Charlie. Yes, Danny. Well, you just got a team arrived here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tremendous team, really. Absolutely tremendous team. Ben McAniff carried the Sam McGuire Cup up to his head to his own hotel himself in the county board. Team uh, chairman, the board and the co-selector, Norman Cole, showing 
the cut there to the team, as you can uh, see, here, it's very exciting. Here, Anthony Malloy, I see him come and Paul Callahan there as well, Paul Callahan, and uh, the Anthony Malloy now about to show the cut to the crowd, and really tremendous feat here, young Mark Cross is one of the second of the team, and the two as well, the team are all here, and delighted to be here, uh, Paddy Cole, would you believe a great man in the team of the world, is up all the way from Jacksonville to greet the team here, wonderful scenes, and uh, I can tell you, Danny, there's an absolutely fantastic crowd. Mick McGrath, I see him here as well. And uh, Bracing Kevin McGlynn, who's the manager of the Southern Hotel here. And uh, Mick McGrath, former PRO, Rose, still a county more. Sort of, uh, official. Anthony Harkin receiving the product as well. And who had him in tremendous form, of course. Because uh, Donegal were one of the fittest teams out of the Federal Park. Barry Cunningham just arriving as well. These are all men who really give their all yesterday. And uh, coming back, they're not quite in Donegal yet, but it's not too long. Things running with it behind time. And uh, I know everyone's disappointed by that. Anthony Harkin is here. Anthony Harkin, uh, Anthony Harkin, we talked to a number of people yesterday and uh, every single one we talked to talked about the fitness of this team and when we talked to Brian McAnuff he, he, he spoke about everybody but he really signalled you out for tremendous praise for the shape the side was in and you must have a great feeling about the way the things went. I was very pleased the way things went. The boys worked very hard all year and the only worry about going to the Ireland final was that they wouldn't get what they deserve and, and, but it turned out well for them on the day and they got the cups, they deserved it because they worked so hard all year and they're a very dedicated bunch of fellas and I'm delighted for them. Everyone says, of course, Anthony, that you won't want to know Ireland unless you're mentally and physically prepared. And certainly for the full 70 minutes yesterday, the side were going full out. And really, even at the end, when Brian went on, it was noticeable the way they were able to lift their game. Perhaps with a six-point lead, they were just holding on. But when he needed it, he made the call. The fitness was there, Anthony. Really, I know you put a lot of planning on it, Anthony, but to, to train an All-Ireland team must be a special feeling for you. There's something special to be involved to be coaching and training a team that wins in All-Ireland. But it's a magnificent feeling. Anthony, thanks very much. I know it's very emotional for you and we appreciate you. We'll talk to you perhaps when back in the bus when things are a little bit quiet. Well done, Anthony Harkin. Thank you very much. Anthony Harkin, they're really delighted with the way things went. And uh, we're just going to try and get a word with uh, perhaps some of the other players. Barry Cunningham, if we can get him. Barry, who came in as a second half substitute. Well, uh, we're just live here in Highland Radio at the moment, Barry. We didn't get an opportunity to talk to you in the Helter Skelter yesterday. You came in against Mayo and did a great job. You told me you would hope to get a run in the All-Ireland Final. That's the way it turned out. Well, everything went like a dream for us yesterday, and me personally as well. But uh, this, this welcome home is, is... Well, we're not home yet, of course, we're in Sligo, but this is unbelievable. Um, all the way up, you know, through Cark and Shannon, the mud and all these places has been... You know, the tracks have been lined. It's just, it's just hard to come to terms with it right now, you know, but... I don't know, this welcome right now is unbelievable and I suppose when we were playing yesterday, you know, we didn't realise how important it was, but yeah. we did. it's just starting to sink in now. This is brilliant. brilliant. Just look back to yesterday uh, when you got the call to come in when Brian Murray was uh, was injured. Always a dream to play in All-Ireland. And I suppose it couldn't have started off better for you, Barry, because you caught a great ball and were fouled at one end, then you were in your own 14-yard line catching the ball. That must have given you a lot of confidence. Well, it did, you know, but looking before the game, you know, I thought if it did come on, it wouldn't go as well as it did against Mayo, um, but everything worked out perfectly well for me again. I mean, Lightning does strike twice, obviously, but, uh, you know, it was just great to get a chance to go in there, and, and I, I made sure that I wasn't going to let the county down, and, and hopefully it worked out like that, you know. Well, nobody let the county down. Thanks a million, Barry. Appreciate it. Well done. Barry Cunningham, really enjoying the, uh, the, the scene here, and I can tell you, tremendous scenes it is, because uh, all the players now are showing the cup to the uh, spectators here and it's a wonderful, wonderful occasion. Sylvester Maguire and Paul Carr there having a wave and, and saying hello to me. I know that Declan Boner, man from Litcher Mick Award. Well Declan, uh, I was just looking at the video of it today and, and that point you scored from the free in the second half. What a, what one, what a memory to have from an All-Ireland final. That's a good memory Charlie, all right. Uh, I, I just, I'm just thinking in it. We're here in Sligo now and an atmosphere is absolutely fantastic. We're heading to the Nigal Town next. And I'm sure like, there's going to be 10, 20,000 people in the league all the time. Like, and that's really something like, what happened, what happened yesterday, like, we won the match and that's all that counts. Like, and at the end of the day, like, winning the All-Ireland, that, 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 every player seemed like we done it yesterday. And we're like, the world's just kind of explain it at the moment. Yeah. What's it feeling like coming back to a crowd like this? And as you say, we're moving on to Bally Shannon, Ballon, Trab, on Dort, and then Donegal Town, Declan. Yeah, every every stage we stopped on the way down from Dublin, like, there was a huge gathering of Donegal people there, the whole way down from Dublin. And uh, it's absolutely fantastic. So the, the crowd is here this evening is unbelievable. And uh, I'm sure that Donegal, I don't know how we're going to get into Donegal town, but uh, 
uh, I'm sure we'll come. Uh, as an experience, as, a, as an experience w- w- worth uh, holding on to like this, I'll tell you, it may not happen too often. And I, w- we're going to hold on this for the rest of our lives. Well, I don't blame you one bit, Declan. We'll talk to you later. Thanks very much. Martin Gavigan, well, uh, Martin's uh, fiancé, of course, was on with Sean Doherty there at the end of the week. Looking forward to a big day next weekend, Saturday. But uh, a couple of big days to come in between that now, Martin. What a welcome home here in Sligo. And it's going to get better as we get into Donegal. That's true. It's, it's unbelievable. Words couldn't really describe it. There's people just everywhere you look. Uh, I don't think we're going to get out of here tonight. Uh, it just makes for a fabulous week ahead. What's it been like since yesterday? Because everyone we spoke to yesterday was really saying they couldn't comprehend it, they couldn't take it in, Martin. Has it really sunk in yet? Well, I think so. The closer we get to Donegal, the more we realise what we've done, you know. We've brought so many people together on this very, very special occasion. And I think it's an occasion that we're going to cherish for the rest of our lives. Well, what about the big day? It's final word about that for now, Martin. Looking forward to next weekend. Yeah, um, well, about 10 minutes to go in that match on Sunday. Uh, it was looking a bit shaky. There were only three points in it, but thankfully we came out on top, and now after Tuesday or Wednesday, we'll get our plans together for the weekend. Thanks for coming in, Martin. Well done. Another Martin has joined me, Martin McHugh. Uh, yesterday he was said he wasn't the oldest man on the team, but uh, have, we, have we got that one sorted out yet, Martin? Who exactly is the oldest man? <laughs> I don't think you need Charlie and Madison the oldest man. <laughs> it's just great to be a Donegal person and that. And for every Donegal person, I think this is... I mean, I'm a hard man to get to, get tears in the eyes, but tonight I think it's as close as we're ever going to go, you know. Well, we're getting reports back from the other uh, stops along the way, Martin, and the crowd is similar to what we're experiencing here in Sligo. And I'm sure the players are really looking forward to getting their feet back in Donegal soil. Yeah, well... I mean, it's probably great that actually we came down by the train, you know, because every stop we had, there was a lot of people there from other countries. And I mean, it's important that the Donegal people see Sam, and uh, we want it for them as well as ourselves. And it's very important that we get it back at a stage where the young people are still the up on us. It's for everybody in Donegal, especially the, the youth. And uh, hopefully we'll get back there in time that, that in Donegal that there'll be nobody going back, going to the end of. You waited a long time for it to happen, Martin. Well worth waiting for. Oh, well, Charlie, it's a dream, you know. It's someone that a lot of people sit down and dream about, you know. And uh, suppose there are a lot of players set for the team and everything else, but this team worked hard, and uh, it doesn't mean it's what part of life you do, anything you do in life, it's all about working hard. And this team worked hard, and tonight, and, la- and yesterday, we were reaping the rewards. OK, Martin, we'll talk to you later on. Thanks for having well done. Martin McHugh there. Well, I've got Matt Butler with me. We spoke to Matt after the game yesterday, Matt. Uh, it hadn't really sunk in, but... Uh, Surely it's beginning to now, you see those Dunny fo- Donegal flags, and we haven't even got our foot back in Donegal yet. Yeah, Charlie, like, you know, like, uh, I was saying to Tony coming down from the train here, and it's only uh, 100 yards, and this is Sligo. You know, um, uh, this is fabulous. You know, uh, this is unreal. Something that we've never experienced before in our lives, and uh, it's just... I can love with this. <laughs> Everything associated with one and all Ireland, of course, we've been told in the past is wonderful, Matt, and uh, it's uh, what a day and a quarter since uh, that final whistle. It's uh, everyone on the high, I'm sure, since that point. Oh, yeah, like, you know, everybody's been in the high, like every Donegal person's been in the high, and just to see the amount of emotion which has been shared in, a, in the past, about 28, 29 hours, it's just on rain, like, you know, it's, like to see it here, uh, like you know, uh, I, I, and as we say, we're not in Donegal. Yeah. This is Sligo, you know, and it's fabulous, you know. It is absolutely fabulous. Okay, Matt, thanks for talking to you. We'll talk to you later on again. I'm highly delighted, Matt Gallagher. Well, Donald Reid's with me here, and of course, a couple of weeks ago, Donald was very worried about whether he was going to be able to play in the final. Last week, thankfully, Donald's injury cleared up. Now, the first question I want to put to you is about this retirement, because you said this was going to be your last championship campaign, but I heard a little rumour today that perhaps uh, Donald Reid was perhaps reconsidering the whole situation. Well, Charlie, it's a, it's a bad night to, to be chatting about retiring, but... Uh, I would like to have 117 uh, appearances for Donegal. I would like to make it 120. Uh, it is a bad time to say the retirement. I do definitely intend to hang up the boots around Christmas time. But uh, one never knows. The evenings, when the evenings get long, it's hard to know. The status in the county at the present time is hard. It's hard to hang up the boots. But maybe when I get home and sit, sit down and chat to my and my wife, uh, God knows what will happen. But I'll have to ask her first. <laughs> Just reflect back on yesterday for me, Donald, because one of the more experienced players in the team, of course, you've been around the county scene for a long time. I suppose you've got to the stage where perhaps you felt that an All-Ireland final was never going to come your way. 
That's right, Charlie. It was un- unbelievable. The um, the canal end was was one of our, our goodest ass on the day. I looked up at house 16 when I came out on the pitch. Uh, I looked down at the canal end and we totally totally outnumbered the uh, the the Dublin supporters, which was uh, the main the main uh, thing that got us going on the day. Yeah. I think the team really played very 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 well. Every man played for each other, and that's what it's all about. And the Irish were very composed throughout the game. We always knew we were a better team. It was actually doing it on the day was, you know, was the biggest worry we had. But uh, given the right stage, I think we proved we were actually the better team on the day. No doubt about that, Donald. We'll talk to you later on again. Thanks very much for the moment. Thanks very much, Charlie. Well, the man of the match himself, Manus Boyle. Uh, Manus, I suppose, you couldn't have asked a better time to come back into the Donegal team and a better way to come back into the Donegal team. Uh, what a performance from you on an All-Ireland final day. You must be a very happy young man. Uh, very happy today, Charlie. You know, I mean, it's just an un- unbelievable week since Tuesday night since I've known I've been on the team. It, it was a big boost to myself, you know. Um, I hoped after the semi-final that I would get a place for the final. It's always nice to be there for the big day. Yeah. Lucky enough for me that everything went well on the day. I couldn't say that there wasn't a thing yeah. went against me in the whole day so I was very lucky I was very fortunate but the main reason it doesn't matter about individual performances the main reason is we were bringing Sam back to Donegal and that is for me what we set out to do at the start of the year yeah. and we're bringing us home and it's reality now that our dream just became a reality yeah. you know? One question I'd like to ask you man is when you stood over that first free uh, into the first half about 35-36 metres out 10 or 12 steps in you know, it went through my mind, well, Manus Boyd is bound to be very nervous here. There's bound to be a lot of pressure because most people would have said, this is what Manus Boyd's been brought in for. You could have uh, hoped for an easier one, Manus. What was going through your mind at that time? Uh, we, t- we talked about pressure. We talked about nerves the whole week. Glad to say I'm a man of very few nerves at times, you know, and uh, I, I didn't feel the, that the occasion got to me. I, I looked behind the whole 16 goals and I, I seen the hull and all the blue. And uh, I just thought it would be nice to keep them down for another while, you know. Yeah, yeah. I just kicked the points and it was, just, it was handy enough points. It was handy enough. <laughs> handy enough to say that <laughs> now, man. <Manus. laughs> the best word. <laughs> but just reflecting, man, did you ever go through a game with such a 100% record, both from baseballs? And I think you might have had one wide out of your hands in the second half, really. I had one wide out of my hands in the second half and I dropped one into John O'Leary's hands, you know. But apart from that, the record was good. I was very pleased with my own game. Hopefully, you know, it would be things to come. I think I can improve. I have a lot of things to improve in my game. And hopefully this will be the start of it. And it's great to do it on such a big day. And it's just great to be a part of this outfit at the moment. It's a great team, great crowd of fellas. You'll not get them nowhere in the country. This is the greatest crowd of fellas I was ever involved with. And uh, there's a lot of people that should be thanked, you know, our parents, the people within our own clubs at home. The county board, the county management, I mean, everybody has developed football along the years in Donegal. I think this is the reward that everybody gets for it, you know. Well, congratulations on a great performance, Manus. Thank you. John Joe Doherty uh, called in at the last minute yesterday. John Joe, my first reaction when I heard that you were being called in was thinking back to 1990 when you had to pull out of the All-Ireland semi-final. What was it like when you got the news that you were going to be starting yesterday? Uh, it was just a dream come true for me, Charlie, you know, uh, I trained, I trained as up as the team, I trained harder than the rest of the boys even. So I was just hoping that maybe, when the team was announced nice Tuesday night and I wasn't on it, well I was just hoping to be on the field when the final rush would blow, because I knew the team were going to win that all So I was just hoping to play some part in it. But the way it turned out, I was just delighted to line out. But uh, in fairness, first off, I mean like, uh, I, know how, I know exactly how you felt and uh, we used it as motivation for the team. Yes. John Joe, was there any time at all that you were fearful for the things to start to go wrong? Because Donegal were so much in control. I suppose apart from that short period when they scored three in a row in the second half. Uh, no, the three points didn't really concern me because the type of team, the type of team Dublin made, they, they, needed, they needed a goal and uh, I didn't, I didn't look as if, they were get, as if they were going to get a goal, so the points didn't really frighten me. Plus the fact that we were still taking over and that point up the other end of the field. So we were keeping that three or four points. Um, keeping that three or four point gap between us all the time. Yeah. The man who presented me, Gary Watson, had a great game. He pulled off a few couple of saves and 
Matt Gallagher, the whole, all the backs were brilliant, so uh, yeah. no, it was going to go all in there yesterday. <laughs> Just before I speak to Gary, I spoke to Noel Higgory briefly after the game yesterday. He was looking forward to going back into Glen and Carrick. I'm sure you are as well, John Joe. Uh, that, that, I was able to be good enough reception in there, but I need no, no more going anywhere else in the county. Yeah. John Joe, well done. Thanks a minute. Gary Walsh, uh, we didn't get an opportunity to talk to Gary. A big man and a couple of big saves yesterday, Gary. And just looking at it again on the video today, during the game when you don't have the benefit of action replay, it's hard to really assess and, and hard to see the importance of, of saves. But there was one or two later on that, you know, they were really going for goals. You managed to get your body there. You must have been very pleased with your own performance. I was, sorry. It was very nice as a goalkeeper to keep a clean sheet, especially at the semi-final and final. I mean, you before the game, everybody was saying that if we didn't proceed a goal, we were going to win all air in the final. Yeah. And I was determined to play my part in the final, and lucky enough, it turned out that way. Great performance. We're just going to take Brian Lee by. We'll talk to you on the way down in the bus again, hopefully. Thank you. Brian McAllister is going live. We're just going to listen to him. I had an association back with me, Hall, in 75, and Barnes Murphy, and behind me, one Christy Murphy, who played his club football with me in Bundoran for some years. And I look forward to the day that I'll be coming up to Sligo to see you carrying Sam in here in your own right. I'd like to thank you very much for turning out in such numbers. And I would like to say publicly on record a great thank you to the Donegal players, all 26. Thank you to people for, for turning out in such marvellous numbers. We have a long way to go to get to Donegal Town tonight, so I hope you'll facilitate us in our journey on the coach. And last but not least, I would like to recognise the local Garvey for the great input that they had here. Thank you, Madam Mayor, for your welcome here this evening. It was most gracious. And to you, the members of the corporation of the local borough, I would like to recognise you here tonight. And standing behind me is our tourism chief, one Dan O'Neill. And I can tell you that the first time I went to an All-Ireland semi-final, Dan was playing in that semi-final, but I'm afraid as an Ulster man, I was cheering against him. But Lloyd carried the day on that particular occasion, but we've since become best friends. Thank you very much, people of Slido. And I hope that someday in the not-too-distant future, as a Donegal man, I'll be travelling south to welcome the train with a, with a Sligo team with the Sam. Thank you very much. Brian, well done for that beautiful work. Well, there you have it, Danny. Uh, that's the situation at the moment in the Sligo Park. I hope you're still with us there. Yes, we are still, sh and we're listening in. It sounds very, very exciting over very there in exciting. Sligo, Charlie. Uh, very exciting. A lot of people on the platform, but uh, the players, as usual, with Highland Radio Sports, very cooperative, and as uh, you can well appreciate, coming forward and having their, their quiet word with us. They're under a tremendous amount of pressure for their time and attention, of course. But I'm delighted to say that uh, they're not hesitating when we're asking them to talk to us. And it's a wonderful occasion here. Uh, it has to be seen to be believed, really, the, the, the turnout here in Sligo tonight. And uh, as Brian said there, congratulations to everyone in Sligo for organising this. But the number of Donegal people who have travelled down is absolutely amazing. And uh, it's just a sea of green, green and gold. And I'm, I'm sure we're going to be seeing that sea of green and gold carried right the way through to Donegal Town because... Uh, what an occasion, and I think some of our players really summed it up now. They're really looking forward to getting their feet firmly back on uh, Donegal soil. That's not too far away because they're moving on to Bundoran in the not-too-distant future. And perhaps we're going to have a word with... Uh, he's trying to have a word with get Noel Hegarty. Uh, Noel's coming across to us here again. Uh, we had a word with Noel after the game yesterday, but I don't think it had really sunk in, Noel. And uh, you were quick to point out, however, that you had no thoughts about retiring. What a welcome here in Sligo, Noel. And I made the point to John Joe, I'm sure, looking forward to getting back into Donegal now. Yeah, we're very much so looking forward to getting back to Donegal. For me to look for things, I don't think we're going to get there tonight. <laughs> well, I know that there's a fantastic turnout waiting for us. It's going to be a very late night, uh, Noel. Has it really sunk in with you yet? It's just starting to sink in now, and I see the people here. So many thousands of people here. It's impossible to, be to believe that there'll be so many people here in Sligo. Yeah. We haven't yet reached any goal. Yeah. Just reflecting back on the game, Noel, I mean, uh, what was your thoughts on it? Uh, was it won as easily as people are saying? Or I know it was very tough for the players out there, but Donegal's performance was so impressive. Yeah, it was as easy as it was. D Dublin were a team that was overrated. The half back line was overrated, now half hour line destroyed them. Now, the half hour didn't play, probably overrated as well, and we won the battle in midfield. So the main sector of the, of the game was yeah. won by Donegal. Yeah. So the Donegal will rely on only Vinnie Murphy. 
some people asking the question about the penalty. I mean, uh, my initial reaction was that it was certainly a very harsh decision, Noel, and when I watched it again on replay, I still felt that, that he'd actually released the ball when you made contact with yeah. him, and your tackle was one that we see in GA football all the time. Yeah. Well, I was talking to Daddy Fire today about that tackle, and he, he told me himself that he couldn't believe it when he got a penalty. Yeah. And I was talking to uh, old Colin Morocco last night, and he couldn't believe it, so it's a harsh decision, but the ball, the justice was done when the ball was checked wide. Well, I don't think there's too many Donny Gorgon and disagree with that. Thanks for mentioning that. No. Tommy Ryan from Chairman joining me. Tommy, I know that you were very disappointed to be left out of the side, but I was delighted to see your, your reaction and your attitude yesterday, really. You seem to be just taking it all in as much as everybody. Indeed, Terry. I mean, I was very disappointed on Tuesday night. Extremely disappointed. But the most important thing at the end of the day is that it's not about an individual, as far as the name's concerned. It's about winning. It's about Donny Gorgon and Sam McGuire. It's not about any individual person. At the end of the day, I think myself, I played my part in getting Sam to Donegal. Every member of the team did, every member of the panel done. So, and I think that that's what it's all about at the end of the day. It's not about individual people. I got the long, or I got the wrong side of the draw on Tuesday night, but football's football. And I, I wasn't too happy about it, but at the end of the day, I wasn't, I was, I was, I was very pleased yesterday, last night at 6 o'clock when I had Sam McGuire with us. Yeah. Home, you know, very happy. No. Well, Tommy, I'm sure everyone's going to be delighted to, to hear you say that, because anybody involved in sports know how disappointing it is to be left out of a team. Well, you get, I mean, I was extremely disappointed last Tuesday night. I mean, bitterly, I mean, angrily disappointed. But at the end of the day, the manager's the manager. He makes decisions. He has decisions to make. The man replaced me. Good night, points. But, I mean, I haven't got a leg to stand on. You know. Well, Tommy, listen, you have plenty of legs. Back like when we're... You can really be a politician, I think, Tommy. <laughs> All right, thanks for me. Thanks for me. Well, James McHugh's with me, and uh, James, I think it's fair to say that James McHugh perhaps has loved somewhat in the shadow of Martin McHugh over the years, and uh, I know you've been a tremendous servant to Kilcar, and I remember you picking up the Man of the Match Award against our man, 1990, and perhaps you didn't get uh, the regular spot that that performance really deserved. You got in this year, you really stayed there, and I felt that you were Donegal's best player in the first half yesterday. I'm not just saying this to you now, James, because you're here. I said that on the commentary yesterday. One of your best performances ever in a Donegal jersey, perhaps. Well, I'd like to think Charlie the most it was, but at the end of the day, you know, everybody from Gary Walsh to Barry Cunningham, you come on us up, really played their hearts out yesterday, you know. To name out anybody, Manus Boyle, you know, in particular, scored nine points, you know, I think really at the end of the day, Manus will be the first to say that it's unfair to name out anybody, you know. It was yeah. really a great team performance yesterday, Charlie. Yeah. Like there again, you have to go back to the first round of the championship against Cavan up in Breffney Park, you know, throughout the whole campaign, you just don't win a match be playing well in one day, you know, I think it was really, at the, yesterday, like, everybody's so happy, because it is more of a team performance than Donegal have ever given, and that's a great thing about it, yeah. They're much vaunted half-back line, of course, so there was pressure on you, three guys, yourself and Joyce and Martin, who had played in 1990 games, perhaps, looking back on that, didn't do yourselves justice, but yesterday, not only, of course, did you play well, but really, their half-back line were a non-entity in the game, and I know Dublin defended so much on them. Well, down the last few years, like the half hour line of, of myself and Martin and Joyce have been criticised. I suppose some of it maybe was justified, but I think there was a lot of it that, that wasn't really justified. But yesterday, like, we went out to prove to, to the whole county, the whole country, like, that 1990, you know, we just didn't do ourselves justice that day. And thankfully, the three of us got the opportunity yesterday, like, to prove uh, we were, were still all right. Yeah. What a great moment for the McHugh family, of course, with yourself and Martin. Uh, the only brothers, uh, well, Declan Bonner's is your best friend. I wonder why yourself and Martin, the only brothers on the team. And uh, what a great thing to bring back to your Kilcar club, where I know that yourself and Martin have given so much, and your whole family have given so much over the years, James. Uh, it's a great honour, Charlie. I mean, to, to win an All-Ireland an All medal is a great honour. Like, and it's that bit extra special, like, when you have your brother playing, especially playing in the same line alongside you. But having said that, they will have to include Joyce in that half forward line because I mean, the way we've been play the way that Tony Gall team have blended together the last few years, you know, yeah. we have a special bond between us now that with God's help will never be broken. Like that team that team has something special and in years to come, like, you know, I think we'll all we'll gather together several times hopefully in the next number of years to celebrate this. And I think there is a special bond built up there that God's help will never be broken. Well, I showed yesterday, James, a, fa a final point to you. We've been ripping Martin about being the oldest on the team. I'm thinking about retiring. I'm sure there are no such thoughts in your mind. Well, I don't think, Charlie, anybody is considering retiring at this stage. It's the same as somebody asked me early on about the draw for the Ulster Championship. You know, I think it'll take us about two or three weeks before we worry about the draw for the Ulster Championship or National League. Yeah. It's just a great honour for me to be part of a squad like this. I'm really thankful and honoured 
that I haven't had done the right years. Like if you go down to some of the great footballers that played for this county off the top of my head, I started off with Michael Carr, my own clubman, Martin Carney, like the like Neely Gallagher from Gidor. Yeah. You know, I mean, we play, they're as much a part of this occasion as us. We just happen to be the lucky ones that had done this year. There's some great servants down through the years for Donegal football. People at county board level, at club level, have kept the flag going. And it's a much spe- special occasion for all years it is for us. James, thanks so much and congratulations on a great performance. Thanks, Charlie. Thank you very much. James McHugh there. Well, I've been already talked to the two McHughes who were in the half-forward line. The man who completed that uh, threesome in the half-forward line, Joyce. We had a word with Joyce after the game yesterday, but it was all, well, Joyce, or none of our feet were really on the ground at that time. But, I mean, everyone's overwhelmed with this welcome, and I know that you particularly, in a couple of other times, are going to be looking so much forward to getting back into Donegal Town. What have you got to say to the people who are perhaps listening to their cars back there at the moment to it? Well, we're only in Sligo now, and uh, I mean, coming two on the train the whole way down from Mullingar the whole way down. I mean, we were just passing through the place, and people stood out to wave their flags at us, and uh, we were really chuffed about it all. And, and coming to Sligo, I can see 10,000 or 15,000 people on the sides of the street just to meet us. Uh, that's great. Uh, we probably won't realise what it's all about for a while, you know. It doesn't go over before we realise. Don't go time, I don't know. I mean, I hope the place is going to be alive and, and standing in the morning. Um, it's going to be a great day. It's going to be a great night. Um, especially for the older generation who have been following the GA for a long, long time. Uh, there's... The old, uh, there's a lot of fellas in Donegal Town who, who stick in my mind, like uh, Tommy McGordy, Don Brassman, um, Andy McBurney, who've been involved in the GA for a long time, and they've told us what it's all about and how much they've given the GA in the years gone by, and uh, it's great for them now um, to see, what, to see what, it's, what the results can bring, like, it's great to see the, the Ireland Channel final, you know, comes to Donegal eventually, after an awful long struggle, and I am so proud to be part of that act, you know. Well, I think everyone here tonight is, uh, Joyce, and uh, it's a tremendous welcome here, of course, all the Donegal people have, uh, uh, that have come down. Have you really, you know, been able to reflect back on yesterday and what it's meant to you in your own career? I wouldn't think so, I really haven't, um, uh, I played so many matches down my down my career, and uh, I'd say this one, the one yesterday, was the most important of all. I mean, before the match, we probably realised it to a certain extent, and we knew that all the matches that we played before didn't really matter, except for that one yesterday. And uh, that was what was so great about the team, because we came through on the day when we really had to do it, and that's what's so special about it. We had the determination, there's other words for it, but <laughs> I use determination now, and with determination and the grit to come through and do the business on the day when it really mattered. And to beat Dublin in a final, that's what winning a final is all about. Absolutely, Joyce. Joyce, we'll talk to you a little bit later on when it's quieter. Thanks for now and well done. Okay. Joyce McMullen there uh, having a word with us, and uh, well, we're going to try and have a word with the captain, Anthony Malloy, because of course uh, he's completely surrounded, as you would expect, by people. We've nearly here had a talk to everybody at the moment. They haven't photographs taken. Perhaps we're going to have to wait till we get, try and get on the bus and have a word with them, but uh, everyone wants to get under the act here, Danny. Danny, I don't know uh, whether you can really sense the, the, the atmosphere down there back in Highland Radio. Oh, yes, we can indeed, Charlie, and obviously it's all very, very very exciting there. Uh, are you going to stick to the original timetable? Do you expect to be reaching Donegal well, right about midnight? It's actually a 9.30 now, Danny, and uh, the original timetable would have dictated that we should have been in. Uh, we should have been in Bundoran now, so obviously things are going to run somewhat late, perhaps half an hour later or so. Well, I'm delighted to say I'm, I'm just been able to get my hand, thanks to Packy, who's doing a great job here. Well, Anthony, we had, a, we had a good chat with you yesterday. I'll tell you, there's about 40 people trying to have a word with you here, Anthony. What a way to come back, and I know that you particularly are going to be looking to get back into Donegal with the Sam Maguire. Uh, you know, uh, it's been a hectic day all day long. Uh, uh, you know, it's all people but I just cannot describe it right you now, of course, now, but... I'm really looking forward to get back into my own country right now, Charlie, you know. Okay, listen, Anthony, I'll let you go because I know you want to get on the move. We'll talk to Brian and yourself on the bus after a while. Thanks very much, Charlie. Okay, Anthony. So, listen, Danny, we're, we're going to have to leave it there. Uh, we're ready to move with them on the bus back to uh, Bundoran, then, of course, uh, Bally Shannon, Ballantra, and Donegal Town. So, for the moment, uh, Danny, until we get back in touch with you uh, from Sligo here, Michael Lamberty will have a word with Michael after a while as well. Uh, you can take over, Danny, but we will be back to you uh, sometime in the near future.
OK, right, Charlie, thank you very much indeed. And that's Charlie Collins, of course, coming there live from Sligo. And Charlie is travelling with Sam. Reverend Joe McCormick is in studio here and he hopes to travel with God somewhere in between uh, the next commercial break and uh, Charlie Collins returning to us again. John McCready, uh, can I have one final word with you, John? Have you any reactions to what you heard there from Sligo? I think that's a tremendous welcome they're getting there. You know, and it's, it's indicative of the the support that was shown by the flags and the bunting, uh, you know, th- throughout last week in the days leading up to that. Uh, it's great to see such a such a welcome for the heroes back to Donegal. Um, I think in a night like this, you know, when, when we welcome our heroes back, it's a, a time to maybe to spare a thought for the uh, hundreds of people over the last century in Donegal who have kept the GA alive and uh, kept the flag flying here. And it's a great night uh, for them too, for their memory. Um, it's a great night for Donegal, Donegal people wherever they are, are celebrating uh, a very um, great victory. Well thank you very much indeed John for coming in this evening and for talking to us and my thanks also to Frank Breslin who was with us earlier on but he made a quick exit there, he's on his way to Donegal OK, we're just putting in now on that programme because Charlie Collins is on the line. Hello, Charlie. Yes, Danny, thank you very much. Well, we're on the team bus here. Uh, we've got, I think we're in Donegal, Brian, are we? No, we're not. We're, we're, we're actually at Drumcliff. We were at Yeats' grave and uh, we're about, uh, I suppose, uh, 11 miles from the Donegal border. Well, there you have it, Danny, about 11 miles from the Donegal border on the team bus here. We've left a fantastic reception in Sligo, but Brian McAniff, uh, I know you've been watching anxiously along the road because a very special moment coming up for you in a few minutes' time when we actually get into Donegal and uh, into your hometown of Bundoran. Yes, it'll be a, a very emotional occasion for myself. I'm looking forward so much to getting home. Maybe I'm a bit selfish in that respect, but one's very proud of one's roots, and uh, I haven't seen my mother as yet since the final win, and I, I spoke to her on the phone courtesy of your own telephone. And it's, it's been a great occasion for myself and my family and herself as well. But more so for the people of Donegal. But I'm being very selfish when I spoke of myself and my mother. Because it's going to be a great occasion when we get the diamond in Donegal. And when we pass through the towns of Ballyshan and Ballantra, I'm really looking forward to that in a very big way, Charlie. And I, 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 from the turnout here in Sligo, I can only imagine what's going to happen in Donegal. Because the re- reception we got in Sligo had to be seen to be believed. Well, the reception has been the same all the way down the road for us going home last night, uh, Brian. It was really tremendous travelling through Northern Ireland and the great reception. What a turnout in Sligo and uh, really Donegal people going out of their way to welcome you home today or tonight. But I'm sure you didn't expect anything less after waiting, everyone waiting so long for a Sam Maguire to come into the county. Well, I think really, uh, you know, it would have been lovely to come home back through the province of Ulster. But I was not the executive meeting where they made the decision. But I would have to say at this stage, it was a very sensible decision because had we come down through Cavan, Monaghan and, and from Manor. We wouldn't have been home until Tuesday. There's no doubt about that, Charlie. Yeah. Brian, uh, you mentioned the crowds that we're anticipating seeing. I know uh, coming down earlier this evening, people were even starting to gather at that stage. And I think the whole of Donegal is going to try and be in some of the venues tonight. And uh, it really says it all about what people feel because uh, I've been back in the county since yesterday. And obviously today has been one really snowballing effect. What I would like to say to the people if they're tuned in to the, the radio station is this. Be very careful with the children because the crushing Sligo was, was unreal, you know. In fact, it was, it was quite dangerous. So if you have young children, make sure that they're very well protected because the crush was almighty in Sligo. In fact, we as players found it tight enough to keep our feet. Yeah. Brian, I, I know we're not going to probably get an opportunity to talk to you again uh, on, when we get out of the bus, certainly, because it's going to be tremendous. Just reflect back on yesterday because when we spoke to you after the game, you said it really hadn't sunk in. Have you had time for it to sink in or have you been even too busy to even start thinking about it? I think, Charlie, where, where I will sink in is when we cross the, the, the Leitrim Donegal Bridge for me. And that's, I think, when I first will realise it. And then when we get to Ballyshan and Ballantra, and particularly the Diamond in Donegal Town, when we meet all the people of Donegal at one central value in Donegal Town, it will be a very special occasion. That You must be delighted with your team's performance, Brian. No team manager could have asked for more or been given more by any team. Uh, they were really marvellous. Full credit to all the squad, all 26 of them in the backup. Anthony Harkin, Mickey Lafferty, Seamus Boner and Norma Cole, our county chairman. Every work, everyone worked in unison. Austin O'Kenny, the team doctor, and the two physios, Angela McMenamin and, and Karen Crawford. It's been a great team, team event for us all. We've all worked very hard, and it shows that if you work hard enough at something, you can reap the benefit. Brian, I know that uh, there's going to be thousands waiting for us. Some people aren't going to be able to make it tonight. I know that you're going to take the team around the county. What about the special message for the listeners finally now who can't make it to some of the venues tonight? What I would advise, don't be disappointed because you're not fit to make it to a venue tonight. We're going to cover the entire county over the next four or five days. I can assure the people of that. 
And I, I, what I would advise them, actually, is if possible to stay at home tonight because there'll be enough people in Donegal Town. And we'll cover the entire county over the next four days and we'll be arriving in every little village and town throughout Donegal. So just hold your fire and we'll be there sometime this week. Sure, everyone look forward to it. Brian, thanks for talking to us. Thank you very much, Charlie. Brian McInniff there live on the team bus. Uh, we're almost coming to the Donegal border, so I'm not sure if it's Danny or Tommy's back in the studio at the moment. Uh, it's me on here all the time, uh, hanging around, Charlie. Good man, Danny. I hope you're enjoying it all back there. Yeah, we're getting part of the excitement and the build-up. You know, we're just wondering what it's going to be like when you do get into good Donegal town. Well, I mean, everyone's looking forward to it. We've got uh, Bundoran, Bally, Shannon and uh, Ballon try to get over before Donegal town. But uh, for those people waiting, you know, uh, hopefully it's going to be well worth the wait. Uh, the players, I know... Everyone we spoke to back there in uh, Sligo, as you heard, of course, was looking forward to putting their foot in Donegal soil again. They really appreciated the turnout. But I know the next few minutes are going to be very special to them. The Sam Maguire is sitting right in front of me here. Uh, Noel McCool, the county chairman, is here in front of me. And uh, an opportunity to talk to Noel because I'm anticipating we're not going to get talking to me too many. Here he goes again with the Magical Road Show down there on the Bundoran Road. Hello, Charlie. Hello, Tommy. Thanks for coming back, Tommy. Well, I know that we lost Noel. We had a slight problem here at the, uh, the other end, uh, but I'm glad to say that Noel's still with me. Yes, uh, to all the people, we're on our way. We're on the borders of the county. Just want all our supporters to be patient. We'll be in the county within a couple of minutes, and I was appealing to everybody there to make sure that the children are all safe, not allow the children running over and back across the road. There's a lot of traffic on the road tonight, and to all the stewards, make sure that the children are not crushed. We know and we understand that there's a huge number in all the towns waiting for us. If there's anything like what was in Sligo, there were thousands in Sligo to greet us. It's the same going all along the road. Uh, people out everywhere waving flags and I would appeal to everybody to be patient, but in particular to uh, make sure that all children are safe. We came by train in the interest of safety. That is the message I want to get across. We want safety to be the priority everywhere. Yeah. Well, Noel, you come in as county chairman at a turbulent time, of course, and I look forward to attending. I remember uh, talking to yourself and knowing shortly after Congress this year. Uh, really, you couldn't have hoped for a, for a better way. Uh, the year's not over yet, but uh, the 20th of September uh, 1982 is a, a date that's going to stick very much in your memory. The, the 20th of September. James McCoo, I'd like you to come to the front. We're just getting a message here from Brian McEnough at the moment, Tommy. We're just going through Grange. Great turnout here in Grange again. So Brian's just calling some of the players uh, forward here so that people will see them. Noel, as I said, a great year for you. Yes, a tremendous year. And of course, as you said, the 20th of September is the highlight of it. It'll always be the highlight of it. I'll remember the 20th of September for the rest of my life. No matter what occasions take place after this, this is the historic one, first time that Sam has crossed into Donegal. Margot said we were crossing at Lifford. <laughs> it didn't happen that way. We were coming over Tullahan Bridge now, uh, and uh, there was no uh, ill intention against Margot or her record. Uh, it was just the fact that we did it in the interest of safety. Uh, it's been great, and I'm very privileged to be the first chairperson uh, of the Donegal County Board when Sam arrived into the county. I know many of my predecessors, some long gone to their eternal rewards, had the same dream as I had and every other Donegal man had, that we'd see Sam coming. I'm the fortunate person to be in the chair at this particular time, yeah. so that certainly will be the highlight. There's still uh, part of the year to go, but 92 will be remembered for years and years to come as the year we brought Sam home for the first time, and I know having won it, we now must make sure we retain it, we don't retain it that we get it a second time yet. Okay, no, just a final point because we're coming close to Bundoran now. Uh, Danny Sharkey mentioned to me earlier on when you came out onto the pitch yesterday, you had a very special wave for the people at Canal End. It must have been a tremendous sight for you. It, it was tremendous to see that mass of green and gold in the Canal End. Uh, as I said earlier, they outwaved, they outsung, they outshouted the dubs. They were magnificent. And that was... Uh, a tremendous fill-up to the team when they came, and indeed I was encouraging the people on the other end of the ground, the Hogan and the Cusick in particular, to do likewise. The canal, I take my hat off to them, they were away out on their own, and they uh, 
We just have to move back a bit. Noel can finish then because uh, some of the boys want to see out the window. Noel, go ahead. Uh, it was a tremendous for look to them, and particularly the brave souls that went in among Hill 16, among the dogs, and waved their flags continuously. They had their victory because the dogs were very subdued in the end. Okay, Noel, we're coming close to one door. Thanks for talking to us. Many congratulations. Thank you very much, Charlie. Noel McCall, the uh, County Board Chairman, a proud man as we approach Donegal. Uh, for you people listening, we're very close to Bundoran now, so get your uh, welcome ready. It's hectic here on the team bus, I can tell you. Uh, the boys are really looking forward to the big welcome they're going to receive. But uh, we'll be back to you later on, Tommy, on the show. But for the moment, from uh, well, a hive of activity here on the Donegal team bus, approaching very close to Donegal now. Uh, sorry, we're in range now, Mick McGrath tells me. Uh, <laughs> Navigator here for the moment, Mick McGrath. <laughs> Ocean Grange, uh, we'll be in Donegal very shortly. For the moment, back to you, Tommy. Right, Charlie, you should know that road well by now. <laughs> Tommy, I can't hear you too well with the noise, so perhaps I'll talk to you when it's a little bit quieter, Tommy. Right, Charlie. I think you better just take it back for the moment. Right, we'll let you go. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. See you later on. There he goes. Go over to Charlie again. Thanks, Tommy, and welcome to the main street in Vondoran. We're just actually below the Hollywood Hotel. That's where the team management and the players are going to talk. Hopefully to uh, the crowd here, and I can tell you the things in Bondorn are unbelievable, absolutely unbelievable. The turnout here is just, well, I, I can't find words to describe it, Tommy. It's just a sea, a sea of green and gold, and uh, bodies everywhere inching our way forward, and I mean literally inching our way forward up the main street here, from the Sligo end of Bondorn, trying to make the Holyrood Hotel, but there's just thousands and thousands and thousands of people have turned out, and everyone seems to have a flag in Bondorn. At 20 past 11, we're uh, almost two hours late getting here, but it's a fantastic sight, and a credit to everyone who's had a long, long wait to wait for the team to come back, but certainly I think that their, their wait is well worthwhile. Brian McAniff and Anthony Malloy are ahead of us with the Sam Maguire Cup, and the players are just overwhelmed with the welcome they're receiving here in Bundor. It's just You have to see it to really believe it. The, the full street is packed. We, we, there's just room for the bus to move up, and as I look forward, I can see people up on the rooftops of the Holyrood Hotel and the adjoining buildings and the lights are flashing in some of the amusement arcades here and there's a fire brigade, uh, a fire engine in front of us with the lights, blue lights flashing that has been accompanying us into the town and uh, this is just fantastic scenes. It's been a long, long wait for Sam Maguire to come into Donegal but certainly the people of Donegal have turned out tonight in their thousands and we know that people have come from as far as Malinhead and over a 100 mile uh, journey they wanted to be at the furthest point away from Mallon, uh, and that of course was the bridge at Bundoran to see the team arrive back in Donegal. So that just shows you the type of commitment and the type of attitude that prevails here tonight in Donegal as we move towards the early hours of uh, Tuesday morning. The turnout is just fantastic, bodies crushed everywhere, hopefully everything will, will go well in the safety aspect. But we're, we're actually at a stop at the moment, Tommy, because uh, there just isn't room for us to move up the street. And we still have to get to Bally Shannon, Ballantra and Donegal Town, of course. But at the moment... Charlie, how are you doing? Yes, Brendan. How are you doing now? All right, fine. We're on the move again. We're, on, we're, we're leaving yeah. Bally Shannon. We're leaving Bally Shannon heading to Ballantra. I'm going to try and get a word with Brian making up here. He's actually cleaning the window, would you believe, at the moment here. He's been a busy man. Maybe he's practicing for a new job. <laughs> Brian, just describe your feelings here in Bundorn, because certainly I'm not a Bundorn man, but it uh, certainly touched my heart there. Yeah, it was a great turnout from the local people there, plus the local community, and there's people in from Northern Ireland as well. It was far in excess of what I would have expected, Charlie. And I, I was very pleased for the boys that there was such a response. I think as we come over the bridge, it's been a similar story. Bally Shannon again, uh, Brian, really a tremendous turnout. Well, Bally Shannon, you always expect great things because there are great club and there are great people in here. And although I agree, I agree with Bally Shannon, there's no club I have greater respect for. Well, Brian, I know that you were very tense there when we were coming into Donegal. You're a bit more relaxed now, but uh, still, the, the people are out in their throngs. It's coming after one o'clock in the morning here. Yeah, it's, it's quite late, and it's a pity that it has to be so late. You know, like, uh, it's something maybe that the GA should take a look at with the presentation banquet that maybe should have it earlier in the day so that teams such as ourselves and if you're going any distance that you could get home to, to the people of the county a little earlier because I was looking forward to Donegal and I'm so disappointed that we're going to be so late getting in there. Well, we hear uh, through the great thing, Brian, that there's something in the region of 30,000 people uh, waiting in Donegal town for the team's arrival and that certainly is some turnout. Yeah, well, I would have expected that. I was predicting somewhere about 25, but... Like it is a, 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 a central spot to Nigal Town, and with the people from in through there as well as, as people from the eastern part of Donegal 
all congregating there, and you can be quite sure that people from Bundoran and Ballyshan and Ballantyre will be travelling on there. It, it's going to be a hell of a night in Donegal Town. Tough night for you and the players, of course. There's a great night coming back, but it's a demanding day. But I must say the players are really handling themselves very well, Brian. They're, they're doing everything that has been asked of them, both uh, off the pitch the way they did it on the pitch yesterday. Yeah, well, it's a very difficult night, and I appreciate that the, that the speeches are somewhat tedious, you know, but uh, the people here are, like, are expecting to hear from the players and to see the players, and we're going to have to hang in there as best we can. But we'll have to review the situation tonight as regards for the rest of the week. What's the plan, Brian? We've had a lot of uh, questions actually about tomorrow night. Uh, uh, Sam McGuire's going into our draw, I think, tomorrow night. Yeah, it's going in through and it's going on to our draw, so it promises to be a hell of a turnout because of the South and South rep representation, representation so high. It's, a, it's going to be a hell of a time over there. I can see myself staying in somewhere. Maybe no one has got a bed inside in, uh, with those mountainy men. I could sleep down, down there for the night. <laughs> you think, will they, keep, will, will they keep you for a night? Ah, uh, well, I know a few people in Glen, and he'll let Fancy and keep because he's a friend of mine. We differ in politics, but that's the only thing we differ on. <laughs> right, well, I'll talk about the politics. Thanks for the moment, Brian. Well, Brendan, that's the situation on our way to uh, Volantra, as we say. And uh, perhaps you might play something for the boys on the bus. Uh, they were singing Margot's song earlier on, so it might be an appropriate one. If well, you could get it lined up for us, Brendan. Well, I know we're just after playing Margot there just a few minutes ago. But uh, then... I'll put it on again, Brendan, like enough says. Well, it's not <laughs> often we won the All-Ireland, and uh, we do, shouldn't empty on the bus here at the moment. Do, do you know what we got a request on here for a man called Columba McDyer? Does that ring a bell? He won a medal, was it, for he Cavan? Didn't, he didn't, indeed. In 1947. 1947. Columba's less than there up in the Kilrain and Glenties. And Brian says he was assistant team manager with him in 1972 when uh, Donegal got to an Ulster on his final and an All-Ireland semi-final. Well, there you go, there you there go. Columba's listening and proud, I would say, tonight as well, as well, you know. Well, uh, best regards to Columba from everyone on the, on the team bus here. A tremendous servant of GA football with Gavin and with Donegal. Mm. That's, that's amazing how many people are still with us, Charlie. You know, there's loads of stuff coming on here, wishing he's all about it. Well, tell you what. I don't know what key Margot's singing in now, I'm not well sure, but I suppose... Uh, no, nobody's, nobody's too worried, Brendan, <laughs> I can tell you. <laughs> I know, it's not in the same key as that horn that's blowing in the background, anyway. <laughs> that's Francie Marley, he's supposed to be hearing himself terribly here tonight. He's a terrible scoundrel. <laughs> oh, there, say no more about that. Anthony Malloy's just keeping a very close eye on the radio here now. I'm, I'm not sure what he's supposed to do with it, Brendan. <laughs> But I wouldn't mess about with him, he's a big man. <laughs> Tell him to stay well away from it, anyway, because the last time the last time I met Anthony Malloy, believe it or not, was in, a, in the bedroom of a person in Kilrain and Glenties. Oh, no, we don't want to hear <laughs> any more of that. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you're getting us all wrong, so you are. I, I, I should have said that right the first way round. No, up a very good friend of his. Um, uh, well, I hope it was a good friend of his in the bedroom. It was a he, it was a he. Was a he Come back for God's sake. That's no consolation. <laughs> oh my God. Seamus, I better say Seamus Quinn quickly, like to ring a bell with the name where, for God's sake, yeah, or I'll be God. killed. Seamus Quinn. Anthony, did you never hear telephone from his why, but... Come here, Anthony. Come over here. He's here beside me. I'm Brick. Does that ring a bell with you? I don't. I don't. You'd be bothered there from a beginning to break sweat over the point of my nose there. Like, you know, I'll tell you, the next time you meet Malloy, take a wide berth round him and then he might swell. That should be the other way about, you know. Definitely should. You want Margo? These girls are putting on the pressure here. Terrible pressure behind for Margo. Hey. What? Hey. What's us? Matt Collar's given out, but you're nothing new about that, Brendan. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get a song on for him later on. Right. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Well, yeah. listen, we're going to blast you with Margo then before you hit the ball and try, right? Right. Keep your lives. These boys will join them singing here. Right. Then here Brian we go. Brian Smith wants it. Tommy Ryan's going to lead the chorus here. We're away then. Okay. Here we go. Tommy Ryan all the way through the Rosses in his shawl to Dunlop. We're walking tall in the go and they won't give up. To the cross of Richard Lippert. With a damn long way out of here. I'll be right there. That's a queer voice. They're all stopped singing here at the moment, Brandon. Can't hear you, Tommy. Come on. Do they not know the words? He's horse. Tommy Ryan's horse. He had to stop speaking all night. They gave us no chance at all. On the scoreboard, red two points ahead. When the ref called 
the ball. Give her the ball. Give her the ball. Here we go. From Van Doren to the Rosses, it is shown to Don Lowe. We're walking slow in Donegal, where everybody knows. We're in our worst of Ireland, and I'm in the world, give up. Till we cross the bridge in Liverpool, with the Sam McGuire Cup. That was a wee bit better, that table. Aye, they're starting to feel up now here. <laughs> they said we could not beat them, for they were far the best. They said we had no answer for the man they called McCain. But Gallagher and Rhino, they stole the mountain again. They're ready to go again, Brad. Here we go. Whitford. From the door into the Rosses. Finish short, good on low. We're walking to Robin Dunny where everybody knows. We're in our first island, and we won't give up. We'll be across the bridge at Liver with the Sam Maguire Cup. Oh, there's some great singers here, Brandon. Oh, I'll tell you. I'm going to have to interview them some night. <laughs> Not tonight, anyway. <laughs> Should I know the words be now? Very well, too. Here we go again. No, sorry. Uh, you had me going too. You're nearly, you're nearly away there, my friend. Spent 20 years of toil and tears with those words. If only if. If only if. To get our first all Ireland, we must win one more match. If it comes our way, we all can say it's Donegal's best One more time now, my friend. That's a good one there, you know. Donegal's best match. To the Russes. I would definitely uh, keep the playing football or whatever, whatever you do. Sharon Crawford leading the chorus there. <laughs> who, was the, who was the boy singing with a very husky voice? Oh, that was Tommy Ryan with a husky voice. <laughs> I was Johnny Cash. Well, don't tell him that for God's sake. Christy McCaffrey, maybe he was somewhere on the bus trying to get upstairs. <laughs> <laughs> Francie Moore. Marley, Francie Marley says, doing a great job driving the Donegal team about. There's a request in from there. Oh, well, no, no. Hey. <laughs> if they were on the bus, they wouldn't say that. <laughs> <you're>, <laughs> no, seriously, under pressure, Francie's doing a brilliant job. Put him under brilliant pressure. Job. There you go, hey. That's good. The atmosphere sounds electric on that wagon there, boys. That, that really does. Say. Tell me, do you all know the words of a song called O'Donnell Abu? Yes. Uh, oh. There's only one people said, hey. Well, there, there's Francie again. There he goes. <laughs> there you go. We'll have to write a song around Francie and the bus there. They definitely they go. There's only a man making more noise than the rest of them. I suppose they're all horse by now. Oh, there he's away again. Oh. Away again. My God. Well, where are you, where are you about now? Uh, we're somewhere between Valley Shannon and Ballantyre. Mick McGrath's navigating. Hold on. <laughs> we're in Ballantyre, Mick McGrath says. Right, so you, you should be stopping down Ballantyre for a session we'll now. Stopping. Hold on. We're coming to Matt. Where's Matt Collar here? It's Ballantyre, man. Come over here beside me. Come over here beside me. This is Matt Gallagher's country we're coming into now, so a special uh, moment from him. There'll be good Matt, crowds about Bring Sam back to Ballantyre, and I know this is going to be very special for you. There you go. Francie, or Charlie. No, Francie's driving, this is Charlie. <laughs> Things are looking uh, good, definitely. You wouldn't believe this, brother. Matt Gallagher's speechless, and I know over 10 or 15 years, and I've never seen him speechless before. Come on, Matt. The last time, I, the last time that I was speechless was when, when uh, Charlie ran around my soccer, like, you know, and uh, I was only a cub, <laughs> you know, but, uh, uh, cub. Uh, it was fabulous, like, you know, it's, the reception has just been unreal, like, you know, and I'm sure Balance I won't let the county down, like, you know, just, it's going to be, you know, another unreal situation where, you know, we're going to be heroes again, and 
Uh, 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 it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, uh, I'm, I'm here. I thought he was funny, shouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's Andy Hagen, by the way. <laughs> uh, it's very real, like you know, and uh, it has been very real all year, and uh, just great. Uh, looking forward to it, Charlie. <laughs> I've been thinking about this day for all my life. Like, you know, this is a lifetime stream. Mm. Well, that's Matt Gulliher, uh, obviously a bit emotional, that Brendan, coming into his own village of Ballantyre. We're that's, almost there. That's what I'm and, saying. And uh, I see there's going to be a fantastic reception for us here. Mm. That so, sounded emotional there now. You could yes, feel indeed. it coming yes, through indeed. there. Well, like, well it means a lot to coming from a small mm. village of Ballantyre to be coming in. And he's going to be carrying the Sam Maguire Cup and then... Uh, Every footballer's dream, of course, to carry the Sam Maguire Cup into his hometown or his home village, and Brilliant. Matt's going to have that fulfilled. Mm. Gary Watson, Sylvester Maguire, and uh, Brian Murray had the honour of doing it in Bally Shannon, of course, and uh, I know it meant a lot to them. Mm. So it's Matt who's going to lead it in, and uh, already the people, bonfires each side of the road here, Brendan. Brilliant. Fantastic scenes, and people coming to meet us. We're actually just come to a halt, so uh, it's fantastic scenes here, and uh, Matt's just getting out of the, the bus to get into the car to take the... The Sam McGuire into Ballon Tra with him, Brendan. So perhaps you might just stay with us till we get into Ballon Tra. Well, we'll stay. We'll, we'll stay. The, the the crack's too good. Anyway, I've got no more good music lined up. Oh, you can play away there at the moment, and, <laughs> and uh, we'll keep cutting in you when we need to. That'll be grand. Okay. Uh, we'll we'll keep we'll keep you keep you online. Yes, yes, yes. Right. We'll we'll go on with this one here anyway now. This one too, Charlie. <laughs> Wait, Tyson, have a bet. It is shown to them be no fathers, multi millionaires. Where Donald Trump would like a chunk to live in solitaire. Here's the Donegal squad ready to go. Let's go, let's go. 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 Not bad at all, that's well. <laughs> Not bad. Right, we're going to have a word with Paul Carr because we're just on the outskirts. Paul, it's uh, a wonderful occasion. Ah, it's a great day for Donegal. Um, very emotional. Uh, well, very hard to put words on what exactly, you know, what you're feeling here. Uh, just great, you know, to see all the people out. Yeah. Well, as I said, Paul, you were the first man I spoke to yesterday on the gantry, and uh, it was great to see the people coming across on the bench because you've all been so much part of the squad. Heart stopping moments there. Um, oh, yeah, you know, but it's been a team effort all year, you know. Yeah. We all did. We worked hard. We did the business. We got it. We've been called okay. out. Here. Paul's been called out because he's going to be taking the cup into uh, Donegal Town along with uh, the Dr. Astor and Kennedy, Seamus Boner, Joyce McMullen, and Paul Carr. Those are the four men who are going to be taking Sam Munn. Dr. Austin Kennedy, as I said, away with the three boys, and uh, Seamus Boner, one of the selectors, Paul Carr and Joyce McMullen. So those are the four people who are going to be taking Sam into Donegal Town. We're just on the outskirts here, Brendan, and, uh, well, we can see that there's streams of cars uh, mm. on both sides of the road. So obviously, uh, the I know that the parking has been restricted in near the centre of Donegal Town, so people have parked out. I'm not just sure exactly how far we are out of the town, but I can tell you, uh, crowds of people... About 100 yards, Matt tells me. Right. A bit more than that, is it? Any, any, a bit any. More than that. Sorry, Brandon. Uh, I was just going to say, any, any sort of feeling of the atmosphere there yet? Well, there's a lot of people around uh, at the moment, but uh, I think we'll need to just go over and round by Johnson's uh, garage before we really get a good view of the centre of that, the diamond. You know, that, that is going to be amazing. Yeah. I, I can yeah. say now that 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 uh, that will, I think. Hit the heart of many now as you come around the corner there and yeah, see what's in front. Yeah, we're looking forward to that because we say when we got in and turned that final corner in Bundoran and saw up the street in Bundoran and a similar story in Ballyshannon when we crossed the bridge, it was just fantastic. So uh, everybody here very, very keen to, to get a look at what the, it's going to look like in Donegal Town. As I said, uh, the houses are all still very much lit up here. I think that no one's going to sleep in Donegal tonight, definitely. Uh, uh, definitely not. No. <laughs> 
I I can hear all the horns blowing there in the background. Is that is that from the cars coming behind you, Charlie? Uh, I'm not sure if they're along the road or beside. I think behind us there's a lot of cars blowing. Uh, there is a cavalcade behind us as well. Mm. Uh, the cars along the side of the road, well, most of those are unoccupied, obviously. Their their uh, drivers and passengers are all in the centre of Donegal Town. Mm-hmm. But uh, there is a, there is people in gardens and, and uh, private houses and standing along the road it's here. Amazing. And, uh, it's, it's just an amazing scene. Mm. Uh, cars just packed on both sides of the road here, Brendan, and uh, we're inching our way forward with our, our guard escort, and uh, we're not too far away now from from the centre of Donegal Town. Uh, Mike McGrath cleaning the one screen here in front of me to get, to get a better look out. Uh, navigator, wonder cleaner, he's everything here tonight, McGrath. Singer, singer, huh? singer, singer huh? of Las Vegas. Singer of Las Vegas. No, I don't think he was singing there. He's a bit hoarse, you know, but uh, he, he was reporting earlier on for us from the three in live. He did a report with Ivan earlier on, so... Uh, Hmm. He's been a busy man tonight, has Mick. And uh, well, there's people, just uh, some Sit. people appearing there on the sides of the roads who uh, decided possibly just to stay outside uh, the centre of, of Donegal right. Town. I see the hearts are thumping now too. Ah, yeah, it's a great occasion. You know. Great. This is this is the end of the journey for for night one anyway. I well, mean, there's probably plenty of trucks. Just when we're on, Brendan, I'd take this opportunity just to uh, everyone I know was very anxious about the itinerary for tomorrow. Uh, they'll be leaving Donegal Town. A quick visit out to Petticoat tomorrow and then back uh, to Donegal Town and then uh, through, all right to through the way through to Ardra via um, uh, Mount Charles, Duncan Eady, Killy Beggs, Kilcar, uh, Carrick, Glen and then finish up in Ardra tomorrow evening. So that's going to be a, a wonderful journey because so many of the players are from that area. The Killy Beggs lads here, Manus Boyle, Barry Cunningham, John Cunningham, Barry McGowan. We just come round the corner, uh, we're just passing Johnson and uh, I can just see, you know, Right. It's absolutely jammed with people. I, I, absolutely I, jammed with people. I'm trying to get a picture of this now. It's oh, real. It's it fantastic, ask. Brendan. Yeah. Absolutely fantastic. We can see the flags flowing. We can see the, the, the main street, uh, the, the, the slight incline that you come up before you come into the diamond. Right. It's just an absolute mass of people. I don't My know how God. we're going to get through that. But um, the cars in front with uh, Seamus Boner. That, that's down 150 there. yards in civil defence, I'm told, to try and, and some sort of, put some sort of order on it. Uh, the boys are up in front of us uh, in a, on an open-air jeep with the Sam Maguire ahead of them. We're just passing the Garda Barrack Station here, which is on our right-hand right. side. Uh, there's a mass of people around that area as well. A welcome home. We are proud of you. Big sign up in green and gold above us. Brilliant. And I know that there's going to be people from all over the county of Donegal mm-hmm. here. And, uh, I mean, let, let's say a big well done to the spectators and supporters here, Brendan, because we were due on at 12.30. I'm sure a lot of those people were down long before that. It's now just turned to a clock, 2.15 almost, right. in fact. So we're mm-hmm. ju- almost two hours behind time. But the enthusiasm that you would have expected at 12.30 is still here. Right. And, uh, I, as I said, these people are probably waiting for three hours or more. So credit to them, credit to each and every one of them. It means something to Brian McAniff and his uh, squad and his co-mentors and, and people like Noel McCool and Anthony Hark and Mick McGrath just in front of me here, but also to the people of Donegal. What, what a turnout they're giving this team. And certainly if, if they never won in All-Ireland, if they won 20 more, this is an unforgettable return to Donegal for Sam McGuire. Especially for all the people still listening out there too. Yes, like, absolutely. You know, they're, absolutely. They're, they're, yeah. they're witnessing what's happening now as we speak, and we go back again to the local radio thing, like but has been brought to them now, like courtesy of that, like and uh, they can savour this atmosphere that they might never had the chance to. Well, to I'm not sure if before. you can just pick up the noise volume there, uh, Brendan, on on the radio. You know, it's. I tell you, we're just coming up now. The, the the incline that takes you up into the diamond here in Donegal Town. It's just a mass of people. Uh, the guardy are doing a, a fantastic job here. I have to say. Uh, there is a number of them keeping a clear way in front to try and get us into the diamond as quickly as possible. I can just see the diamond. I can see people up, up there. I can see flags flying. Uh, you know, it looks to be a wonderful scene, and uh, people yeah. waving to the to the bus here, waving to the uh, players who are all behind us, and the players and their wives are all looking out the window. And I know they are amazed, really. Every each and every one of them we've spoken to, you've heard it. They've been amazed by the turnout of people tonight. You know. Mm-hmm. We'll just, we'll just listen to this now for a wee minute, I think. Okay. For anybody that has just tuned in here, you probably realize what's happening. <laughs> We're just going to try and open the door to give you an idea of the noise here, uh, Brendan. Right. 
Right. And, uh, it's fantastic. going to be deafening when you get in there. Like, it's yeah, well, we're, going just, to... we're just actually coming into the diamond here now. We're just up at the top of the, the street, which takes you into the uh, the Abbey Hotel, uh, just on our left-hand side, just above us here, about 20, 30 yards above us. So we're just actually coming into the diamond here now in Donegal Town, and it's a fantastic sight. These people have probably been waiting for three and four hours. Uh, the boys are up on the top. Joyce McMullen and uh, is it Seamus Boner or Paul Char? I'm not just sure. Seamus Boner and Joyce McMullen standing up with Sam McGuire and well we've had Ulster Championship winning teams coming back to Donegal Town but of course this is the dream come true for all the spectators and uh, all the supporters of Donegal. Sam McGuire is back in Donegal Town. I see people from there, Kenny to my right hand side. Uh, I see people from Dunlow here as well. Uh, people from well, people from all over. There's people actually from Tyrone there that I see. Uh, Austin Brady there from from uh, Chairman or Adrian Brady, I should say, a chairman player is there as well. You know, right. fantastic scenes, Brendan. Absolutely fantastic scenes. I'm trying to picture the, 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 the entire diamond is lit up by just a mass of people in green and gold. Just, it's unbelievable. Uh, Everybody seems to have a flag. Right. Everybody <laughs> seems to have a flag. The, the, the colour side of it. Oh, it is, God, it's a fantastic sight, Brendan. I know my, my, my end of the family, they all left at about 8 o'clock this evening to get up there, like so. Well, we're here in good time, obviously, <laughs> but uh, hopefully, hopefully they're, they're getting a good view of what's going on. Uh, a little bit boisterous to our right-hand side, just... Uh, where where's Open. the platform of the the where's the platform situated? Well, I, tell you, I can't see the platform at the moment, uh, Brendan. But mm. uh, we're in, we're inching our way towards just past the uh, Abbey Hotel here at the moment. It's just actually I can't see it. It's up at the left hand side where uh, you just would turn left for Chili Beggs and right. turn right for out the main Road. Right. It's just at the corner of the diamond. So that gives you a picture of, of, well, of gives, where it is. That gives us an idea. You're just usually you just now at the at, at about the Abbey. You're just coming parallel with the well for the AIB uh, bank. We're just coming up almost parallel with the uh, with the Abbey Hotel, and then of course it'll be the the Abbey will uh, wind its way right through. And the way to your right, the diamond is solid with people. Now our parking was restricted in the diamond, of course. There's no cars in there. It's just a mass of thousands of people, you know, and. Uh, Rafo on tour, I see. So uh, there's there's people here from everywhere, Brendan. And there. as I said, I mean, we got to remember these people have been here certainly for well, I don't know how many hours they've been here for. We're uh, almost two hours late, so they've been here for at least three oh. hours, maybe four and five hours, and they've waited patiently. And credit to them for doing that. It's a Amazing. tremendous occasion. You'll know you'll know my flag in there, but I have a flag in there, but I'm not there. You know what I mean, like. You have a flag there. Does it say anything special? That, that says R A P Dublin. Long live Donegal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's people out hanging out the windows here at the Abbey Hotel, waving to it. It's a similar story uh, with the Central Hotel as we passed it there. Uh, we've come to something of a halt now, Brendan, but it's just, these are fantastic scenes, absolutely fantastic scenes. Amazing. Walking tall in Donegal was never so good. Walking Walking tall in Donegal was never so good. That about sums it up, doesn't it? I'll tell you, I'm getting the whole feeling coming back this end now, definitely. Yeah. Uh, I I would say even the people listening now from all their necks of the woods, that are listening to this broadcast like are, are feeling this like you know yeah well we hope so we hope so brandon because uh, uh just gone 20 past two in the morning like i mean it, it could only happen in donegal couldn't it absolutely. it's like it's like uh, about two o'clock in the afternoon on a warm day in bundoran <laughs> uh, or ross nowda or somewhere or fort salon oh. uh, you see them selling ice cream now shortly <laughs> <laughs> the sun's still shining anyway <laughs> that's the main uh, one some people are feeling to the crowd to get back so that the players can get up to the platform and i must say that the, the general public have been most cooperative. The guards have done a, a great job in the most difficult circumstances you can imagine. I mean, there's uh, just the enthusiasm to get close to the bus, to touch the bus, uh, to see the players, to touch Sam. It's just fantastic. I mean, uh, and uh, you know, it's, well, Brendan, I mean, it's, I suppose it's hard to comprehend on radio, really, mm. compared to TV pictures, but uh, it's wonderful to be here. Well, I think to, to feel the atmosphere coming back there, like, you know, it's. Yeah. 
Well, uh, we're I mean, it's home now, like it is yeah. home. You know, so that's you know for 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 all the thousands who travel to Dublin and for all the thousands who who stayed at home to watch, like that's right. That's it's here now. It's a, it's officially in Donegal, like you know. Yes, indeed. Brendan, we're going to try and bring you some of the speeches live. Uh, perhaps we'll just break off for a moment and come back to you in a couple of minutes when we get up to the presentation area again. Well, I'll fire, I'll fire through a bit of music here in the back okay. and keep right. the, we'll keep the line open. Right. I uh, will ring you back, Brendan. Right. Okay, we'll okay. ring you back. Okay. Unbelievable scenes greeted them there as as we uh, now as we speak. Hopefully, we'll be returning back there. No, as we speak, um, unforgettable and scenes. Here we go again. We'll try, oh, here we're, we're back. We're back. How are you doing now? Yes, Brendan. I'm still not out of work. Hello, Brendan. Yes, Paggy. Hello, Brendan. Yes, Charlie. Hello. Right, okay, right. This is obviously introducing the team to the massive crowd that has gathered in the square and the diamond there in Donegal Town. So we'll just have a listen to this. Hello, Brandon. Yes. Hello, Brandon. Yes, Pat. We're just waiting for the speeches to begin here. Brandon, Brandon, The players are just taking their seats on the presentation platform. The scene is unbelievable here at the Big Old Town. No, McCall. No, McCall has uh, been called forward as well. We're going to have a, a series of speeches, Brandon. And we're going to let you hear those speeches live because... Uh, so far tonight, apart from Donegal, apart from Sligo, we haven't heard what the likes of Anthony Malloy and Brian McInniff have had to say to the crowd. Right. So we decided to leave that until we got to Donegal Town, because really this is the, the final lap of the journey tonight, and we're going to let you savour those. Absolutely. Well, we're with you right through to the end, aren't we? So, we'll take all the speeches on, and I'll tell you, we're guaranteed... That's fine, Brendan. I'm just having a little bit of difficulty hearing you, uh, Brendan, but you can keep the line open because once the speeches start, uh, we will be bringing the speeches to you, but uh, there's just a little bit of difficulty with me hearing you and probably perhaps not you hearing me, but certainly when uh, when you're talking to me, I can hear some hear you sometimes, I can't hear you other times, but what is happening is all the players and their wives and the officials are up now on the platform. The speeches are about to start and uh, we'll be let you hear those speeches. So we'll hand over to the chairman uh, of the Four Masters Club. The Pimpy Venomal, a commander, the Napoleon Valier, and the Port of Clear Canada here, the Port of Clear here. Again, a chop. Ladies and gentlemen, first of all, I would like to welcome. It's only going uh, tonight. Thank you, Donald Chairman of the Board of Members of every county in Ireland, <laughs> including Dublin. I would like first again to remember the Donegal people who cannot be with us tonight on this great occasion. I have in particular in mind the people across the waters, United States, Australia, New Zealand, and every country in the world to be here on a night like this. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, oh, until yesterday, we only had one All-Ireland medal in the country, and that was Columbo McGuire and Randy. Today we have plenty. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I will now call on the chairman of the Four Masters Club, John Cassidy, to address you. Adieu, Schnapp. You are tired listening to me all night. Thank you very much. Well, dear people, 
ladies and gentlemen of Johnny Crown, and indeed half of the whole of Ireland, the whole of the 32 counties, from New York, San Francisco, all over the world, have come again here tonight to see at last some of where I This is one of the greatest occasions that this country or country has ever seen. This is a dream, a dream come true. A dream, a dream carried out by a team of heroes who left here on Saturday to go to Dublin to do a job.
seven. I would agree if there's another doctor in the audience, there's a ghost in the office at the back of the platform. If we could have a doctor to the back of the platform, please. No, absolutely no! I'm definitely a very proud man to come here tonight and I'm very privileged to bring Sam back to where he belongs. I have a whole lot of people to thank for making this great occasion. I start just by thanking the players on my own behalf. They're a good bunch of lads. Um, there's a closeness amongst us. Um, the second and known. And I think that stood out there yesterday in, in Crow Park. I'd also like to thank our own county board. They've been a great help to us all year. And um, our supporters club, who have, have taken on a lot of money for the training fund. Thanks very much. <laughs> Once again, I'd just like to thank our mentors, and I'll mention them all again, Mickey Lafferty. <laughs> Seamus Bruno, Sam McCall, and Anthony Harkin, and Bruno, Anthony Harkin, had us in great condition there yesterday, she's also, I now like to thank uh, the man himself, Brian McInnes, give us a big hand there. And I must say a very special word of thanks to him for taking me back out of the wilderness last year. And um, I'll never forget him for that. Thanks very much, Brian. <laughs> and another man I must thank also, and um, that's Tom Cullen. Um, way back about 10 years ago, I wasn't playing on the 21 level at the time. And he asked me in for a second round match, and he can't eat me in all right in that last year as well. Thanks very much, Tom. <laughs> um, I, f I forgot to thank our physios, Karen Crawford again, and Andrew McManaman, and uh, to see Miss Patrick, and of course, I have to say a very big thank you to Dr. Austin Kennedy, who has done a lot for me and my injuries, and he's done a lot for the team in general. Thanks very much, Austin. <laughs> and of course, I cannot forget yourselves out there, the greatest supporters now, Ireland. Not alone when you spent it last Sunday. It's been great to us down the years, the good times and the bad times. Thanks very much. <laughs> and I'd also like to thank again my own wife and family. And I say this to you on behalf of all the tired in the golf squad, on behalf of all their wives and dear friends for the pleasure of all year with us. Thanks very much. 
Charles now, but it is really unbelievable what's happening here today. And I'll just finish off by thanking you all for turning out here tonight and giving us a good homecoming. Thanks very much. Gentlemen, Anthony Malai, led by example. He didn't ask any other player to do something he wouldn't do himself. He did it, and the uh, rest of them did it as well. Well done, boys. Uh, next, I would ask to call on Kyle Condy, two thousand ten Condy Gunnerville. I will call for her leader. Before starting, I would like to appeal to everybody to stop pushing forward. There's a lot of children out there among you. We can't be trained for one reason and one reason only. We can't in the interest of safety. Please bear with us for a few minutes. I know you've been here for a long time, but remember, look after the children. They're much smaller and frailer than you adults, and could we refrain from pushing forward? Thank you. A fire on the Higa, higher than the Karamoistri, of the Gardenia Tan Shop. Would the people that are up on that pole there with the flags, would you please, please come off it for the break? Thank you. <laughs> it's a tremendous night for me as a Kyola to be Kyola on the first night that Sam McGuire came back to the Diamond in Donegal. I'm well aware that many previous chairpersons had the same dream. We dreamt that one day we would play in an All-Ireland final in Crow Park. We were there yesterday, we played the dogs, we outclassed them, We proved all the people wrong, the media, the TV, all these famous analysts who said our short game wasn't good. We won Sam yesterday in style. I want to thank all those supporters who went to Crow Park yesterday. The display of green and gold in the canal end as the team ran out of the field. Was a sight unbeheld by anybody in the Nigal ever before. But you won't mind me mentioning the few brave souls from whatever part of the county they came that went into the hill and displayed the green and gold in the hill. <laughs> you outwaved, you outshouted, you outtalked, you outsung, and you left the dogs for dead. You were an inspiration to the team yesterday. I can't forget the people who were at home, who lit the candles and said the little prayers. They were a tremendous help as well. We're sorry we're so late. We couldn't believe 
when we came as far as Mullingar that the station was lined up in both sides. The crowd started to get bigger as we came through Longford. Leitrim was mighty. Sligo was greater again. Yes, there was a friend then. But when we crossed Hello, into Brendan. the county, the horn was unbelievable. Hello. Hello, Brendan. Yes, Puggy. Yes, there was a friend. We're still here, we. Oh, I. I thought that we had seen most of our spectators be that time. But what's here in front of us? Because he felt, he felt the team wasn't fit 
when you saw yesterday how fit they were. We ran them out of Fort Park. To the people here in Donegal, represented by Joyce McMullen, Paul Carr, and our Dr. Austin O'Kennedy. And although John forgot about his own name over there inadvertently, one Seamus Bowler. I'd like to thank the four Donegal town men for their input. <laughs> to the other people involved, Michael Lafferty and Noel McCall, I would like to say a very big thank you publicly here tonight. When I spoke last night, I forgot about the very good firm up at the corner, Lynn Tappan and his good wife were there. And I would like on behalf of the players and myself to say thank you very much for kidding us out so well and putting your money in for a battle. <laughs> I still must not forget on this night the Donegal Creamies that were there by our side on the Ulster final day. And I'd like to say thank you to that firm as well. To our supporters club and our county board, our current county board, and last night I referred to our former county board in the way of Charlie Faulkner, Francis Cunningham, Jimmy, Jimmy McKelvey, and Bart Whelan. I would like to say a very big thank you as well. The current county board give us all the help that we do this year, and a special word of thanks to the chairman, secretary, our only female secretary in these 32 counties, Lori Donnelly. And one must not forget, many bags himself, one Danny McDamee. <laughs> now on a different story, it would be important that I would relay something that is very important to us all. I spoke about it in the hotel last night, and I would like to recognize some people, and I would like a good attention for this, because this comes from my heart. I recognize your own Tom Conn, and I'd like to stand forward, Tom. Tom, how are you? I'm sorry Tom has left the stage, but I would like publicly that he will be recognized tonight. He's coming. Hold it on for a moment. We were all done the old men at Cope Park yesterday. And when I went into this town last Friday, we done a little spot for Gayburn, and I have prearranged to have a cup of tea with Carl Tom up there with a lovely girl from one dawn called Mary Gillespie. I suppose you all know Mary. She's one of her own from Bundoran. I know her father's a man from in through with her late father. And one must not forget, as John Cassidy mentioned, Peter McGovern and for his input. And I would like him to be recognized here tonight. Also, I forgot last night one poor man that had a little bit early in the year and he was a very big help to me when I went back and Tom would like to recognize him here too is one Joe Winston from Letterkenny. <laughs> the little story I called Tom out was when him and I were having the cup of tea he says, Celine wants to see you. I went into the shop to see Celine and Celine had a small package and a card and when I opened up there's a per set of green scapulars there. Now I had, I, had a, I had equipped the team with green scapulars and I put the green scapulars in my pocket and I carried them on to Crow Park as I thought I would. When Mark McHugh came to me before the game and I'm not a religious man and Mark said to me, Brian, I haven't got my scapulars. I put them on Martin and if you were looking at one caption there yesterday, you would have seen Celine scapulars. <laughs> Well, it was a great day to be a Donegal man. And tonight, you showed your thanks to us in a very big way. And on behalf of the players and myself and the backroom staff and the county board, I'd like to say a thank you for waiting so late. And be very careful on the way home. And I hope that this will be the first of many trips to Cook Park. A great day for Donegal. 
Thank you all for your coming here tonight. And God bless you all. Hello, Brendan. I'm not coming yes. back to make a second speech. Well, Brendan, uh, just uh, Norm McCall, just having a word terrific. with the crowd, and uh, just a final well, word from Norm well, McCall here. One sad note to it last night in Dublin, when a young man from Downing lost his life. It had nothing to do with football. Unfortunately, he was set upon and died tragically from the injuries he received. Our sympathy goes out to his family and to the Downing's club. Yes, we'll have a minute silence. Thank you very much. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that about takes care of welcoming Sam back to Donegal. We have a now! Ladies and gentlemen, I would like, on behalf of the club, to thank everybody who came into this town tonight for that, first of all, their appreciation of our players and our team manager for the result that brought us yesterday in Cooper. Hello, right. Brandon. Yes. Hey. Brandon, that just about wraps it up from here in Donegal Town. Yeah. I hope you're able to get all the speeches there. And I think everyone would echo the uh, message there from the chairman of the Four Masters Club, Frank O'Donnell, that uh, I hope that everyone will have a very safe home from Donegal Town. It's been a, it's been a fantastic occasion the whole weekend. The winning in Crow Park yesterday, coming home with the team. We hope that Hyde Radio listeners uh, have enjoyed our coverage of tonight's events. Starting in Spank and Sligo just, uh, well, I suppose nearly six hours ago now, and culminating here in the Diamond in Donegal Town. It's three o'clock in the morning, there's thousands of people around. So, Brendan, I suppose, thanks to you and uh, to Tommy before that, the manager before that, and uh, to Declan for the big cooperation, uh, and, and Dan earlier on as well, in helping us to bring, and for many thanks to Packy, who's been with me right the way through the journey, and a particular word of thanks to uh, Seamus Marley uh, of Marley Coaches, who facilitated us along with the county board and, and been able to travel down with the team. It was a great occasion and we hope that people covered or, or enjoyed our coverage. It's getting very good, Brennan, so I'll hand back to you. That's fine, Charlie. There you go. Well, folks, we want this history in the mick in there tonight. I think it was great to be a part of the whole scene and the whole... How would you say that they savour the entire atmosphere there that, that, that came from Donegal, from early on, from Sligo, right through to, you heard all the speeches, you almost witnessed the thousands and tens of thousands of people that were gathered there in Donegal town. I feel very proud, I feel very chuffed. I, I, I do feel very emotional at the moment to be a part of the whole set. We'll have this, I think. Donegal.
Rambo, read the book of the classic. Ask us to get a Rambo, Gabagoy, kick for the Rambo, a stack of old coin, top bone, a rule of dollars on a penna, can't tell off again, cast on Jabu and Jab, as a cool old the salary, I'm cared to hold them back and it's no. Connell Abu, oh, what a way to, to end the whole thing up there. What, I don't know, I, I'm still feeling the, 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 the pangs, as they say, coming through back to me. It's just exactly five minutes past three o'clock in the morning. Maxwell's with you. Uh, I, well, I know once you're thinking it's not two o'clock. <laughs> but sure, what the hell? It's history. 
and the phones are ringing. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to stay with you for as long as I can, uh, just because I know for a fact that there are going to be thousands of people coming out and heading home from Donegal Town now. At this point in time, there's going to be thousands more <laughs> staying on, but there's going to be quite a few heading home. So what I'm going to do, and, and rather than send you home very quiet and, and very lonely, I'm going to stay with you for an hour anyway, hopefully for an hour, to keep you in company on the way home, wherever you're heading now at this minute in time. I'll do my best to answer the phones in, in the meantime as well, because I know that you see what I mean. But anyway, again... Uh, loads, what I, I t- it'll be talked about, that will be talked about for many and many a day to come. Ah, uh, boy, anyway. anyway, here we go. We'll keep the music going, anyway, whatever. Oh, she's cotton. It's a fine how do you do that the people you're talking to don't talk. Morning sun memories will have me. That's a great song. There's no doubt about that, you know, that is a great song. Sunny Crampsy there, morning sun and memories, and I'll tell you, a lot of people waking up at dinner time tomorrow thinking it's morning time. The, the whole country, the whole county, sorry, the whole county is going to be suffering from it, lovingly known as jet lag in the morning, afternoon. Ah, sure, what? What, 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 what? Right then, as you're way, wheeling and driving and taking your time, hopefully, and making your way home, uh, I, I'm wondering, just as the the person that phoned me a wee while ago still lost. <laughs> Not a word. Not a word, says he. Right, then, we're moving along nicely. It's just between uh, 25, 20, 20 minutes to 4, almost 20 minutes to 4 o'clock in the morning. If you've just tuned in, it does, yes, it's not a tip. I no, no, no. It's live. A live local radio, Highland Radio, here we uh, to some time. Let's put it like that. That's that's the only way can we describe what's going to happen in the next half hour, hour, or whatever. Like you know, uh, we're we're trying to guide the happy people, thousands of you home tonight to your homes in Ardra, Glenties, Letterkenny, Cairndona, Malnhead, Lufford, Straban, Oma, uh, where else? St Johnson, Carrigans, uh, Rafo, Convoy. Wherever you're heading home to now at the minute. Uh, take it easy. We all know you're coming in, in different directions and we're trying to get home. I know it's late. It's, as I said, it's just it's 19 minutes to 4 o'clock in the morning to be exact. But what about the ABBA? That's what's waking you up. Definitely. And um, we're keeping it 60s up to about a half 4, thereabouts. Now, what's happening? Right. And Ball Buffet just got a phone call on there on mobile to tell us that there's a slight traffic jam about Ball Buffet at 16 minutes past 4 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> there is seriously a traffic jam on Ball Buffet. They are running bumper to bumper at the minute. So if you're coming tearing down the road from the gap, be careful, be wary, right? And if anybody happens to be coming up the road, just watch out for a, a fierce lot of traffic on the road at the minute between Balba Fay and, say, Lufford or Staban. So keep an eye out for that. Take it easy. You can get home plenty of time, loads of time to get home, right? Now, uh, request this time. Um, oh, I, I was to play a request for a crowd of boys that were going to be leaving um, Rafo. Uh, shortly and heading to Donegal Town. So they're 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 a wee bit late, but they're, they reckon they're going up to join the party up there. So they're they're on their way up from Rafo to Donegal. They're looking for Margot for the third time tonight. We'll get Mar- we'll get Margot on before we finish. Let's put it like that, because we're keeping it all kind of sixties type stuff now at the minute. To up up until about half four, and also say good morning to Mary Care who's working. And I mean working fierce hard and the canteen and I met saying, come on, come on, Donegal. She's three cheers for Donegal. And this is from all the girls who are sitting, having their tea now at the minute. And also to their supervisor, Jerry, they wanted to you know, keep, keep him, you know, I mean, at this hour, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. And uh, they're all, this is from all the girls in the mold room, right? They want to say good morning to you. And keep the music going, she says, like, oh, what, are you Are you really, she thought it was a machine and she was talking to easy. But anyway, we're keeping her 60s to about a half, half four. Here we go. Hey, 
they go hanging on, slippy there. I tell you, this hanging on stages. It's 20 past 4 o'clock in the morning. You're probably wondering what's going on. It doesn't matter at this stage. History has been made. That was the McCoys from Hang On Slippy. It's called from 1965. We're keeping our 60s to a half past to guide you through the wee hours of the morning to your home. And I hope everybody makes it home in peace. Right. Only you. <laughs> that, <laughs> bum bum yourself. That was uh, the foot topper there from the shadows. Right then, just to say, a couple, couple of calls came in there while that was on. Uh, one of them was where mobile phone who was keeping check on us on the road down. They have got safely down towards Lufford. The roads are clear. Thankfully, nothing to report. And also just got a nice call just back in. If you remember way back, oh God, I, can't, I forget now what time it was, but they were way back at the start or at the tail end of the, the, the at the beginning of the, the music side of the programme, we got a telephone call from four lassies from Cairndunna. That was Roisin, Rosemary, two Rosemary's and Brenda. Uh, their daughter is told, just was on the telephone there just to say that they have made it home safely to Cairndunna, all the way from Ballyshannon, where they went to to witness the Sam Maguire coming through the gates of Donegal tonight. So that's nice to know that everybody's beginning to get home safe. I'm not staying too much longer with you now. A lot of people are should be making it home by now uh, from everywhere. I'll stay for about another five or ten minutes uh, just to make sure that everybody gets on there. We'll, we'll finish out the, the, the 60s piece anyway with this one. Uh, dedicated to Ro- the two Rosemary's, Roisin and Brenda, down there in Cairndona. Good morning to you. How you doing? Hmm. Bobby V, rubber ball comes bouncing back to you, me and everybody else. Unfortunately, that's it. Come to the end of a very historic, long, but interesting and very enjoyable program. I hope you, the listeners tonight, enjoyed what you heard. It's a half past four exactly in the morning of whatever day it is. I forget now, Tuesday the 22nd of September. A time and a day and the last 48 hours that surely will, will, will stay in the memory of many, a many, many man, woman and child for the rest of their life. I hope you enjoyed our part of it, Highland Radio's coverage of the entire events from the sports teams right down. The coverage of Sam coming home to Donegal tonight, I hope you tuned in. I hope you enjoyed that and felt a bit of pride and passion in the county and its people. That was fantastic. I, I, I was proud to be a part of the whole thing and to be associated with it. On my part, I say good night to you all. If you are still travelling, take it easy. You will get home eventually. A lot of people are beginning now to get home safe and sound. That's the main one. And remember, the Sam is on its tour of Donegal as well. Hi, boy. So it'll come to every wee nook and cranny before the end of this next week or fortnight. Thanks again for your company, for you, all you good people who, who joined us at 12 o'clock at midnight tonight. Uh, as I said, just it's 31, 29 now, it's, it's whatever it is, it's a half four. I'll go and leave you, but what I have, I'm going to leave you with a song that uh, has been played now for the third time tonight. <laughs> but the last time it was played, if you can remember back that long ago, do you remember the, the entire Donegal team singing? Margo's home, walking tall in Donegal. Do you remember that way back in, when they were coming through, coming out of Ballyshannon, heading towards Ballantra? The whole entire team was singing this live on your radio. There was nothing taped, there was nothing singing this song. This is the only way for me to go out tonight. And again, God bless you all. Take it easy going home, whoever's left out there. I'll be back at midnight again. Back to normal. Some kind of normality anyway. Good luck. Bye-bye. From Bundoran to the Rosses, in his shawl to Dunlow. We're walking tall in Donegal, for everybody knows. We're in our first all Ireland, and we won't give up till we cross the bridge at Leopard with the Sam Maguire Cup. When we came out of Ulster, we left them all behind. We beat Kevin and Fermanagh, and everything looked fine. 
When we met the men from Derry, they gave us no chance at all. But the scoreboard read two points ahead when the ref called for the ball. From Bundoran to the Rosses, in his show to Dunlow, we're walking tall in Donegal, where everybody knows. We're in our first dull Ireland, and we won't give up till we cross the bridge at Lippard with the Sam Maguire Cup. Then came the semi final, we met Mayo from the West. They said we could not beat them, for they were far the best. They said we had no answer for the man they call McHale. We got Gallagher and ran him like a small boat in a gale. From Bondoran to the Rosses, in his shown to Dunlow. We're walking tall in Donegal, where everybody knows. We're in our first all Ireland, and we won't give up till we cross the bridge at Lippert with the Sam Maguire Cup. There's a football star in Donegal, he's called Martin McHugh. His brother James and Tony Boyle, they'll know what to do. Gary Walsh and Joyce McMullen with their captain Malloy. Declan Bonner and the rest, the dubs we will annoy. But we can't forget the backroom boys and the boss man Brian McNiff. He spent 20 years of toil and tears with those words, if only if. To get our first dollar. We must won one more match. If it comes our way, we all can say it's Donegal's best catch. From Mundoran to the Rosses, in his shown to Dunlow. We're walking tall in Donegal, where everybody knows. We're in our first all Ireland, and we won't give up till we cross the bridge at Lefford. With the Sam Maguire Cup We'll be walking tall in Donegal With the Sam Maguire Cup <laughs> About, you know, <laughs> definitely should. You want Margot? Well, these girls are putting on this pressure here. Terrible <laughs> pressure behind for Margot. Uh, hey! What? Huh? Hey! What's us? Matt Collar's given out, but you're nothing new about that, Brenda. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get a song on for him later on. Right. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Well, yeah. listen, we're going to blast you with Margot then before you hit the ball and try, right? Right. Keep her alive. These boys will join them singing here. Right, then. Here Brian we go. Brian McNiff wants it. Tommy Ryan's going to lead the chorus here. We're away, then. Okay. Here we go. Tommy Ryan over to the Rosses in his show to Dunlow. We're walking tall in the league of everybody knows. And they won't give up. To the cross of Richard Lippert. With a Sam Maguire Cup. Tommy Ryan there. That's a queer voice. They're all stopped singing here at the moment, Brandon. Can't hear you, Tommy. Come on. Do they not know the words? He's horse. Tommy Ryan's horse. He hasn't stopped speaking all night. Give him the ball, give him the ball. Here we go. From Bundoran to the Rosses, it is shown to Dunlow. We're walking tall in Donegal, where everybody knows. We're in our worst all Ireland, and we won't give up. Till we cross the bridge in Liverpool with the Sam Maguire Cup. That was a wee bit better that time. Aye, they're starting to feel up now here. They said we could not beat them, for they were far the best. What the fuck? They said we had no answer for the man they called the king. Run, Gallagher, run, run, run. They're ready to go again, Brandon. Here we go. 
Whitworth. From the door into the rises, in his shore and field and low. We're walking to Rob and Danny God, for everybody knows. We're in our first island, and we won't give up. We'll be crossed the bridge at Liver, with the sand the wire up. Oh, there's some great figures here, Brandon. Oh, I'll tell you. I'm going to have to interview them some night. <laughs> Not tonight, anyway. <laughs> Should I know the words be now? Very well, too. Here we go again. No, sorry. Uh, you had me going too. You're nearly away there, Maxwell. He spent 20 years of toil and years with those words. If only if. If only if. To get our first on Ireland, we must want one more match. If it comes our way, we all can say it's Donegal's best One more time by Maxwell. That's a good one there, you know. Donegal's best match. To the Russes. Magic. Well, there you are, Maxwell. They can play football better than they can sing, anyway. <laughs> I just definitely uh, keep them playing football or whatever you do. Sharon Crawford leading the chorus there. <laughs> who, was the, who was the boy singing with a very husky voice? Oh, that was Sammy Ryan with a husky voice. <laughs> I was Johnny Cash. Well, don't tell him as we're God's sake. Christy McCafferty, maybe he was somewhere on the bus spare like an upstairs. <laughs> <laughs> Francie Moore. Marley, Francie Marley says, doing a great job driving the Donegal team about. There's a request in from there. Oh, well, no, no. Hey. <laughs> if they were on the bus, they wouldn't say that. <laughs> 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 no, seriously, under pressure, Francie's doing a brilliant job. Put him under brilliant pressure. Job. There you go, hey. That's good. The atmosphere sounds electric on that wagon there, boys. That, that really does... On the roads, as you heard there with Charlie, they've just passed the Abbots, so that means they're not that far from the town of Donegal, a tea didn't tea tea. After listening, they can sing along with this one. Of course, it's the Goats, son of Las Vegas. Or the cry of the old man she Who was the man in the iron mask Was Jack the Ripper set free But ask them all Where's Donegal It's still a mystery Cause if I could I'd build a wall Around it all Donegal If I could serve to keep the keep them out My God I'd build it tall You see those chicken and righteous I'd read your lives of all <laughs> You're back, Maxwell. Oh, we're back with you, boy. They're in good singing form. We'll let them sing away here. They're way into Donegal Town. We'll tap the ball to in a moment. Right. Turn it up there. You should do this one too, Charlie.
Yeah, prophetic words indeed. They're taking Sam back home with them to dear old Donegal. And uh, we all expected that it would do that, particularly Charlie Collins was always very hopeful that Donegal would pull it up. And Charlie is on the line from Donegal. Hello, Charlie. Hello, Danny. I was very confident, Danny. Yes, indeed. You, you, al you always were. <laughs> of course, you, you have an insight into football and have for many years. Well, I, I, I felt this Donegal team had shown enough during the summer, Danny, really, to carry it right through. But... Uh, Maybe that was wishful thinking, but thankfully it was proved right yesterday. They were really tremendous. And on a personal note, Charlie, I want to compliment you on the blinder you played yourself yesterday. I was in Croke Park. I didn't hear your commentary, but I heard a lot of people all day talking about it. So congratulations to yourself on the blinder you played yesterday. Thank you very much, Danny. I appreciate it. Uh, Charlie, wh what, was, uh, what was your overall uh, reaction to commentating from Croke Park on your native county? Well, I think it was, as I said on the commentary yesterday, Danny, it, it was uh, a great honour, really, for Highland Radio to be there when, Hyde, when Donegal were winning and playing in their first All-Ireland final. Uh, as you know, we followed them very closely since we went on air back in March of 1990. As a matter of fact, our first outside broadcast, sporting outside broadcast, was a National League quarter final from Clonus, uh, a match against Meath. That, unfortunately, ended in defeat for Donegal, but we've more or less followed all their games in Championship and League. I think we missed one McKenna Cup game, but all the rest of the games have either been brought live by ourselves or in association with uh, some of the other local stations around the country, such as LMFM or Shannon Say, people like that who've helped us out. So, you know, uh, it really was brought to a head yesterday at Crow Park, but... As I said earlier on today, Danny, when I was on with Sean, and I'll say it again, I think none of us really anticipated the, the whole atmosphere of Crow Park yesterday. I'd been there for an All-Ireland final many years ago when Donegal weren't competing, but nothing was comparable for me uh, occasion-wise to yesterday at Crow Park. Looking over the canal end, where I know you were yourself, <laughs> yes. uh, it was just absolutely brilliant from the Hogan stand. The sea of colour over there was mostly Donegal, but the Armagh people sprinkled in as well. And uh, I know it brought a tear to the eye of many people and certainly brought uh, a lump to my throat at times during the match yesterday. Yeah, indeed, I was in the canal end, Charlie, and you'll have noticed on the voice there's still a certain amount of hoarseness there in it. I probably should have joined you in the commentary box. It might have been easier on the voice. Well, but the, the atmosphere over there in the canal end was something else. You yeah. know, it was a lot of Donegal people were there and a lot of Armagh people as well, of course. They were up for the minor final. That's right. So it, we were all northern people. We were all from the north. And, yeah. uh, you know, we were all comrades and friends there yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, you know, the canal end certainly got behind the team from the word go. Uh, Noel McCall came out at the beginning there before the team came on the pitch and he, he waved over to us, you know. Yes, and he, I saw him, Danny. You yes, know, we, 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 took, we took his, his hint at that point, you know, and we certainly got behind the team, you know. And yes. uh, they, we, we sang over there, you know. And w one of the songs that was composed uh, uh, just on the spot is The Hill is Very Quiet Today. <laughs> <laughs> well, it actually was. It, was. it was remarkable from the Hogan stand in our comedy position, the difference in both the ends of the park behind the, the canal end goes where there was so much movement and cheering and colour and the hill of course uh, particularly in the second half even when Dublin scored there was hardly a flag flying it's just a, a sea of people standing very still and I know that a lot of them left the game before it was over as well yes. so uh, there was a fair difference between both ends of the pitch yesterday for obvious reasons of course yeah well we had something to cheer about uh, Charlie right. we had something to flutter our flags for exactly. and uh, you know it was really enjoyable the team was doing so well on the pitch you know and uh, the mood was great over there yeah. and uh, you know we were quite confident from half time on that we were going to win as well you yeah. know even yeah. before that but uh, we're quite sure from then on. Yeah. Charlie, you're in Donegal Town, are you? We're actually in Sligo. Are Donegal you in Sligo? Oh, you yeah, have moved. We've, we've come all the way up to the Southern Hotel here. The team are due to arrive in uh, approximately 15 or 16 minutes' time. Right. Uh, the train, of course, uh, we have been saying it was due around 7.30, a quarter to 8. But there is a slight delay. But it is due in here at the Sligo station at around 8.30, which is not very far away now. Uh, there has been entertainment here at the Southern Hotel. When I spoke to Ivan at the top of his programme, the crowd was beginning to swell. And since that, of course, just uh, over an hour later, a fantastic number of people have travelled down from Donegal. A lot of Sligo people are out here as well with their Donegal collars on them. And, of course, that's another thing we've seen. Uh, the number of other counties that have thrown their weight in behind Donegal hope for a first All-Ireland. But there's a massive crowd here at the moment and a great atmosphere, as you would expect. Uh, Stam, well, it's not actually going to be in Donegal when they get off the train, but mm. in, uh, just in an hour after that, 
they're due in Bundoran, of course, and I can imagine the scenes along the road and in Bundoran when we reach there, as Sam Maguire comes in, not for the first time perhaps, but for the first time in, in the hands of a Donegal captain having won it at Crow Park. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's going to be a fantastic night, I think, Danny. Right. So we'll get over to you then, Charlie, around about half past eight when the train arrives. Yes, and well, uh, we, what, we're tra- what we're hoping to do is talk to people, obviously, there. There's going to be some speeches here, Danny, which we will take live, particularly Brian McEnough talking. And uh, we hope to talk to one or two of the players. Myself and Packy then are hoping to travel with the team on the bus. And perhaps that will be a better opportunity to have a quiet word with people and just see how they're, how they're feeling almost or over 24 hours after the event itself. Because really yesterday, each and every one that we spoke to really said it hadn't sunk in yet. It was just over the tops of their heads and uh, it would take a day or two for that to happen. So hopefully with their feet firmly back on the ground again, a little bit difficult for that to happen with the crowds around here tonight, we'll be able to get reflection from them and on the whole game yesterday and how they're feeling today and those some of the incidents that happened during the game and what effect they had on the overall result. Charlie, you have whetted our appetite and we will look forward to rejoining you about half past eight whenever you come online again and we look forward to those interviews with the important people in connection with the team. Okay. Thank you very much for now, Charlie. Right, Danny. Okay, bye. Bye-bye. Hey, you didn't want to come up here because you said you wouldn't be able to make it up the steps. I'm yeah. um, just nag out, Charlie, you know, the, the whole game, it must be the whole occasion, like, Barry was getting on to me coming up the steps and I didn't do much running, so I shouldn't be tired, but... I'm, I'm, I'm never as tired, it's just unbelievable, it's hard to take and you need to be here to, to realise what it's like. Well, Tony, I mean, everyone watching the game in Barry as well, I mean, we were concerned, obviously it was the first All-Ireland final, we were worried that Donegal, that the occasion might be too big for them, Barry. They scored the first couple of points and, you know, there was a moment of concern when he missed the penalty, Charlie Redmond, that was, but really after that there was only ever going to be one team winning it. Certainly, uh, we were trying to stop Dublin getting a good start and... Uh, they scored two points within the first five minutes, but uh, that's a testament to our own team. We're a very experienced team, and we never lost our heads. And we always—I think that was the secret of our victory. We always believed. We always believed we could do it, you know. And uh, eventually, we showed that we had the class. And uh, I hope we've shown the way for other teams uh, in years to come from Donegal. That it's only down to what you believe in yourselves. And if you believe in yourself on the day, no anybody can do it. Well, Tony. James McHugh crashed a shot off the underside of the crossbar. Martin put the result in uh, breaking ball over the bar. Then Manus had a goal chance when you fed him a pass. That hit the crossbar and went over. And you often think then, well, those little bits of luck are they going to turn against you, even though Donegal were playing very well at that time. That's true, Charlie. We should have been at least maybe six, seven points up at half time, you know, but you have to make your own luck. It, them, them two balls could have went into the net very easy, but we knew going in at half time, like we were only the two points up, but we knew ourselves that we were playing well, and we had Dublin rat- rattled, and we knew in the second half, if we kept running at them, going at them, that either we were going to get our scores from play, or they were going to bring us down and get our freeze, and lucky enough, that's the way it turned out. Yeah. Well, I have to make the point about Manus, of course, uh, there was a bit of controversy about Manus' inclusion in the site, some people were happy with it, some people were unhappy, we hope to talk to him later on. But really, Manus Boy today proved what he's been proven for Kelly Beggs for many years, that when the pressure's on, he can really produce the goods. I don't think he actually missed a free today. Uh, <laughs> to tell the truth, I was too busy watching uh, Mick Galvin <laughs> to actually see the... I don't even know if Manus scored, but I'm sure he's, he, 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 I'm sure he's got a bag full. But really, that's been the strength of the Donegal team all year, that whenever uh, a player has been injured, that uh, uh, there has been an equally as good a player coming in from the bench. And uh, just even this morning, uh, Martin Shovlin, who's been... Uh, I would say our best player all year and has given sterling service to Donegal had to bow out with uh, a bad neck injury and it must have been bad because Martin Shovlin would have played if, it, if, it, uh, if it, the neck was even, if his head was hanging off I have to say but uh, certainly that's been our strength the whole way through and uh, Manus Boyle really came good today and I'm delighted for him. Another man I think I have to mention Tony is James McHugh really uh, one of the unsung heroes again but the amount of work he did particularly in the first half Tony I mean you were there watching it it must have been tremendous to see a small man like that winning so much ball and fairing around the midfield that's right, Charlie, that's one of James' great lenses. He picks up a lot of breaking balls, and even though he's small, he's very strong on the ball, and he's very hard to dispossess, and he won a lot of possession for us in the first in the first half, carried it straight at the Dublin defence, and got got a lot of important frees for us in the first half, and it, it just proved James, he's a very important part of the, the squad. Much was made, of course, that this could be a very physical game, Barry, but really, in fairness to Dublin and to Donegal, it was tough out there, but we didn't see a lot of the hitting off the ball that has become a big factor in GEA football, and I think that really merited the occasion of an All-Ireland final. But I think, really, uh, hitting off the ball and this dirty stuff, it's, it's talked before every All-Ireland final. Uh, I think it's something that uh, the media maybe possibly 
uh, bring forward and uh, it, it gets the players to a certain point. But I think when the ball is thrown and everybody is more interested in the ball, if, if you're fighting with the man beside you, you're not concentrating on the ball and you're not playing. And on All-Ireland Final Day, it's all about concentration. You've done the fitness side of it. It's a psychological approach that matters. And uh, if you give 100% uh, on the day, psychologically, you'll not be thinking about uh, kicking and hitting. And uh, let's face it, Donegal are too good to resort to that and too uh, experienced to fall for that ploy. You were the other end of the park, proving a handful for Harrigan, but uh, it has to be said that in the early stages, Murphy was really proving a, a handful for Matt, but Matt got the measure from them as the game went on, Tony. That's right. Uh, Vinnie Murphy, he caught a lot of ball early on, you know, and uh, he, he, we knew coming into this match that he's a good fetcher and he was going to have to be marked closely, but Matt, he started slow, but in the end, like Matt proved that he, he's probably one of the, if not the best fullback in the country this year, like he proved in the end up like that he was, the, he, he got the measure of Vinnie, like, and, and he played Vinnie out of the match near the end. Yeah. Barry, I remember talking to you immediately after the Ulster final when you came in and really clinched your place on the side. It's been an up and down career for you at senior county level. Really, most people would feel you should have been a regular on the team for many more years than you have been. But really, this is the icing on the cake for you. And, and would this be the big major step forward for you now, playing corner back, perhaps not your best position on an All-Ireland winning team? Well, uh, that's the way it's been all year in the Donegal team. It's been pressure to keep your place, and uh, if you do get a chance, you have the grasp, but you have to take it. You have to take the bull by the horns and really go for it. And uh, thankfully, uh, and, and indeed, unfortunately, for John Cunningham at uh, the Ulster final, uh, I came in and uh, I took my chance, and I, I must have played all right, seeing as Brian making up, <laughs> giving me a place for the semi final. But that's what it's all about. It's all about grabbing your place, and uh, certainly, I hope to be about for, for years to come. Well, you were an All-Ireland Under-21 winning team, Barry, now a senior All-Ireland, and you as well, Tony, a question I want to put to the both of you. For all the young people back in Donegal who couldn't get a ticket to come here today and watch this on TV or, or listen to it on radio, describe how you feel now and how you felt and, and the build-up to it during the game today. Well, I'm just looking out here on the pitch now in Coe Park, and it's just a sea of green and gold. Uh, I don't know if there's anybody left at home, but if there isn't anybody left at home, put up the flags and light the fires. We'll be home tomorrow, and... Uh, Please give us a, a, a rasp and reception, I'm sure you as well. Tony, I put the point to you during the week that many of the young men playing Gaelic football really, uh, you know, associate themselves with you because they've played so much with you in underage football. What do, what's your message to them today? <laughs> Start celebrating, we'll be home maybe, we'll be home tomorrow night and we'll, we'll have a good week of it. What a proud day for our grand Anthony Malloy. That's a great day, you know, it, it hasn't really sunk in yet, you know, but um, it was a very proud moment for me, especially heading up them steps and it's one that I'll never forget for the rest of my life anyway, Charlie. The first Donegal man to get his, ham, his hands on Sam Maguire. It's been a long wait for everyone in the county. Anthony, uh, you've been playing GA football since you were a very young lad. You've had success at underage level with your club, but I'm sure no moment is comparable to this one. Not at all. Like, it's, it's, it's something that I've dreamed of like, since I was a young kid. And, you know, we, uh, like, I, I used to be watching all Ireland's way back maybe 10, 15 years ago. Like, and I used to model myself on them players like, that used to walk up, up, up them steps and that. And, you know something I always dreamed about and that dream has certainly come through here today Charlie It was interesting the start of both halves Anthony Brian Murray got a touch on it you got the ball in your hands and that really set the pattern for the game because although Dublin got the opening two points of the game once Donegal got that opening point from Martin McHugh there was it ever going to be one winner only Well we knew ourselves that we had to start uh, you know a lot faster than we did against Mio and uh, I think we'd done that uh, from the throw and I think we got a ball down into the forwards and I think we should have scored that one but and saying that, like I think you know, we stuck to our task mainly, like throughout the whole match. And I don't think you know that we really had doubled into the match at any stage. Were you concerned at all? A six-point lead midway through the second half. Everything was looking so good. Donegal were moving so well, and then all of a sudden, perhaps things just came to a, a stop for a brief five or six minutes. They got three points in a row. Brian McEniff ran across the pitch a couple of times, and I know he was talking to you, Anthony. What was he saying to you at that time? Well, uh, I think he, he, I think uh, from what I, I can remember, I think. Uh, he said something like, you know, that I need you now or something like that. And uh, I think, uh, you know, uh, it was at a vital stage because, you know, Denny Gall was starting to flag a bit around the middle of the field at the time. And I think Dublin were picking up a few breaks and I think he was getting worried at the time. And But maybe I think that, uh, you know, that beating that we got from Dublin uh, in the National League uh, quarter final was a blessing in disguise. Yes. Really, Vinnie Murphy was very dangerous, but uh, Matt got the grips with him. But Donegal, really, you know, it was a supreme effort. Even Barry Cullinan, when he came on as a second-half substitute, uh, performed like he did against Mayo. And it's hard to do that after playing well, coming on in one game, and then repeating the performance again. But in the first couple of minutes he was on, he got a free in Donegal's favour in one 14-metre line, and then caught a great ball in the other 14-metre line. Oh, that's, like, you know, Barry done a great job, you know, done an excellent job when he, man, like, you know, he really, uh, you know, took the pressure off us right in the middle of the field. And, um... 
Brian Murray was in hard luck, you know, I think his injury played up again on him. But I'm saying that, I think uh, it has been our strength all year, you know, the lads coming off the bench. And, you know, we, we have 26 of a panel there, and any one of them, you know, could be on the starting 15. And I think that, you know, has been our strength all year. And, and the, you know, the team are in excellent physical condition. Uh, I think it's a showed out there today, you know, and, and I must, uh, you know, mention Anthony Harkin. He, he has worked very hard with his team all year, and as you, as you all can see, like, we're in great shape there today, yeah, you know. Yeah. Martin Shovelin having to pull out, I'm sure, was a big disappointment to him. What sort of effect had it on the team, really? Because in the build-up to an All-Ireland final, a late withdrawal like that sometimes can have an unsettling effect. Uh, there's no doubt about that. Like, I think a few heads dropped and we heard Martin wasn't uh, for the line out. But uh, I think, you know, we used it uh, like, as a motivating factor because uh, Martin Shovelin, if he was playing out there today, like, he would give an arm and a leg or, or even his head, like, and, you know, what type of player he is. And I think, you know, we went out especially to win it for him. Yes. Tommy Ryan was left out, of course. I was speaking to him down in the dressing room area, obviously on a high like everybody else, and it's great to see that. But the man who came in in his place, Manus Boyle, was under a tremendous amount of pressure, Anthony. But what a response from Manus. Possibly, uh, in some people's opinion, his best ever game in a Donegal jersey. Yeah, I think so. Manus had an excellent match today, like, and he really stuck over them freeze when he needed them. And, and saying that too, like, it, it, it was hard luck on Tommy Ryan. You know, Tommy Ryan had an excellent enough to finally he scored three great points in play. But, uh, like, that's, that's, uh, like, that's the name of the game. And, you know, Tommy's a, a big-hearted lad as well, and you know Tommy, as I said, never dropped. I don't think like once uh, when he heard the team announced. And uh, as I said, like man has come in and done the business. Like and that's our strength all year. Like we have so many people that we could have brought in there and, and done the job. You know, yeah. the midfield battle, of course, was always going to be a very important one. The fact that they had to take Dave Foran off yet again, it was speculated perhaps he wouldn't get the starting lineup. That showed they were in trouble. And although Beelan had a couple of very good chances and, and flattered to deceive at times. Dublin were never able to dominate midfield. Yourself and Brian Murray seemed to always have the upper hand, and then yourself and Barry Cunningham, and that was so vital, really. Yeah, well, it is vital, like uh, you know, the present day football to to win the battle around the middle of the field, and I think it's more important, you know, as, as these breaks is getting the breaks, and I think Donegal got a good few of them today. Certainly, Paul Beelan, um, you know, when he came in, like I think he, you know, he, he spoiled us for a bit there, but we we stuck at our task, and as said, when Barry Cunningham came in, like he had a great match, you know. Yeah. This time last year, Anthony, uh, I know that after the Ulster final, as I said to you on Tuesday night, you were thinking about, indeed, you announced your retirement from inter-county football. I think everyone was delighted when you decided that, no, well, I'll, I'll give it another go. But uh, that's the decision. I'm sure that you're pretty pleased that you made uh, the decision to come back again. Well, there's no doubt about that. Like, uh, I'm the happiest man in Crow Park here tonight. And, and you know, geez, I'm, I'm really happy you know, that I changed my mind now at this stage. And, I, you know, as far as I'm concerned, like, you know, retirement is the back of my mind right now, you know. There's no question that Anthony Malloy will be announcing his retirement again. Nobody wants to hear that, Anthony, but uh, it would be nice for us to get the first scoop on it. I don't want to hear you saying it, but uh, any any thoughts about it at all? Uh, I, I, I have no thoughts whatsoever. Like, uh, it was a decision I made last year when, you know, my injuries weren't clearing up on that, and I was, I was probably a bit impatient in that, but... Um, I, I, have no, I have no mind at all of retiring right now, Charlie. Well, finally, Anthony, just uh, the people are still down here. I'm sure we're going to have trouble getting you back to the dressing room as much as we had getting you up here. Just describe what it's, what it's really like now to be... And because you're going down in history, you must remember this. The name of Anthony Malloy is really going down in history because he's the first Donegal man to get his hands on Sam after leading a, a Donegal team to victory. What's it feel like? Yeah, well, like, uh, at, at, uh, like it, it hasn't time you know, to sink in as of yet, but... Uh, there's no doubt about it. It's a very special day for me and indeed, uh, you know, the Donegal t- footballers and the whole of the Donegal people. And uh, it's one that I'll always look back on and cherish for the rest of my life, Charlie. I almost thought you were going to play at one stage yourself in the second half there. Well, I suppose it'll cost a couple of hundred pounds to Crow Park. A couple of thousand, I would think. I don't know. I don't know, but I'm sure. we we'll have a collection in Donegal. But I don't want to be flippant at this stage, you know. I, I had a job to do and I wasn't going to let the game slip away for the fact I couldn't get changes in and tell the boys what to do. And I, I took it, I suppose, the law into my own hands and I went on to the pitches I often done before. Yeah. And I know that it wasn't what the GA would like. But it's time we did take a look at our own game and getting messages in. It's impossible to get messages in, Charlie. And uh, it's time we looked at the Australian situation where you have a runner because it's a 15 sided game, free moving, and if you can't make a change, but well, there's no point in having subs. Exactly. Well, I think uh, most Donegal people, when everybody, uh, apart from possibly some of the people high in the higher echelons of the GA, would agree with that, Brian. A team manager has to get his message in. Anthony Malloy thought your message to him at that stage was, I need you now, so let's see you. 
Well, that's one of the messages I'm given. <laughs> <laughs> I won't say what I interjected with it, you know. <laughs> but, you know, however, one and the when they are ways, and I suppose one can't repeat those things, you know. I felt, to be honest with you, we, we had lost our shape when Big Murray went out to the midfield. Barry played well when you were doing, I would have to say. But Murray was a physical presence there that Dublin weren't fit to cope with. And that extra strength, on top of that, Anthony Lee probably was given a difficulty as he does in games. And the big fella come in, he was had a fresh pair of legs. Anthony was after having a battle with Fone in the first half, and then have a fresh man in on top of him in the second half. It was a difficult, and we, we, we sagged, and we caused difficulty in the, in, in the fact that we overplayed the ball in midfield area, instead of getting it into Tony and Manus and Declan, who were very un, much on song today, yeah. and roasting the Dublin fallback line. And I felt if we had kicked the ball in that period, we probably would have won much easier. Yeah. There's a hundred things we could talk about, Brian, but obviously pressure of time. We're not going to allow us to do that. Uh, James McHugh hitting the underside of the crossbar. Charlie Redman missing the penalty. Manus Boyle putting over the bar when perhaps a goal was on. But then Manus Boyle scoring some tremendous points from both frees and from... Uh, play. That's one point, Brian, we have to make. Manus Boy, top scorer today. I said to you on Monday and I said to you on Tuesday, I would have picked Tommy Ryan, but uh, I'm glad I was wrong. Well, I would have to say, like, uh, no more than leaving Martin Chovelin off after the, for the Ulster final last year, leaving Tommy Ryan uh, off was, was probably the, was the most difficult decision I had to make. Tommy's a very fine boy, but I needed a, a free taker that would settle the side, and Manus done more than that because I asked him to search within himself and give it the sort of football that we throughout the county knew that he could give, provided he would just go out and do it. And he went out and done it today, and I'm very sorry for Tommy. He didn't get an opportunity to partake in the game. I had him warming up there, ready to go in. But to be honest with you, Charlie, it was very difficult to know who to take off because everyone was giving their 100% and no one seemed to be flagging. Yeah. All I was using was as a tactical substitution, which wasn't really the right reason to be putting, putting a man in, except that I was wanting to waste a bit of time. Yeah, well, knowing, we, knowing you the way we do, Brian, we suggested perhaps the subs would be more of a time-wasting enterprise at that particular time, but that's neither here nor there. Brian, what a day for Donegal. I mean, you've waited so long for it. We talked often about it. We talked during the week again about it. You mentioned the people from Malinhead to, to Bondoran from Lifford over to Glen Column Kill. They, ha they weren't all here today. Hopefully most of them were listening to us on Highland Radio, and, and what a day for them. Marvellous day for Donegal. When we went out there at Pedigo yesterday, and the same poster, the mail out of Pedigo, so it said, Ulster says Sam. It, sa it said everything. The village of Pedigo was there in mass. A small little area that's locked off from the rest of the county over a mountainy road and to see the turnout and even though it's, it's not the, the richest area in Donegal they had a small gesture for each player within the squad and I would like to say a very big thank you for such a small rural area but for the people of West Donegal North West Donegal in Ishone that aren't having uh, you know, players on the squad I hope that they will build on that success so it won't be just the county team that will benefit from this success but also the club set up within the county and in, in the areas in the North West and in shown where football has, is not as strong as it, sh it could be, and, and I hope that it will develop there. Yeah. But I'm also very proud for the neighbouring counties of Derry, Tyrone, and for Manor, naturally enough, as an Ulster man, and for the entire province, province but also for my neighbours, which I live beside in Leitrim and Sligo. We're going home that route. It wasn't my own picking, incidentally. It was decided at the county executive I wasn't even at it, because my intention was to come in through Pedigal and down to Bundoran back to Donegal Town. But the executive and the wisdom, and I think they probably made a good decision, because we would never have got home. Yeah. We would have been stopped in Kells and Navan and Virginia and Cavan, because it was well the fact that, that the, the Cavan people wanted us going. In a weak moment, I kind of half promised Clonus I'd go in there because of my strong man and connection, and then we in the south of the county have a lot diocese, you know. Yes. But probably it's probably the best decision, to be honest, which you go home by train where the boys can have a meal and arrive there because it won't take long to go down the Sligo Road and into Donegal and then on to the Diamond. Yeah, well it was wonderful I came down this morning, Brian, to see the flags right the way through to and through Monaghan, through Meath supporting Donegal. So obviously there was great feeling for this team, but really uh, 1992, what a year it's turned out to be, Brian. 1991, uh, this time last year, I often refer back to it, but my memory very vivid of the conversation we had in, in the Holyrood Hotel at that particular time when you thought over your future and uh, you decided to give it one more last go. You just right, you described to me at that time was that pride wouldn't allow you really to step down. If you were going to step down, you were going to step down with Donegal winning. Yeah, well, I would have a lot of pride in myself as a, as a person and I have a lot of pride in my county and I have pride in my players and we did not perform for the people of Donegal and Clonus last year and we didn't begrudge down the success but in saying that, we didn't give down a game and we felt very sore and I felt very sore so I reflected on it for four weeks and people thought I was maybe acting the, the, the book, you know, when I was doing that. But I, I had a lot of things to consider when I was taking on board because there's family life as well as everything else. And there's life beyond football, you know, and I had to consider those things. Football is, of course, my first love, as everyone knows. But 
I, I had pride as well and I wanted to go back and show that we could do a lot better than we did do and that within the squad was that opportunity to win Sam and I'm so pleased to be associated with such a good set of lads. Yeah. Well Brian, there's many people now going to say, Brian you've done it all, what more can a team manager hope to achieve than winning Sam? And I know, again an unfair question, but uh, people like me have to ask these questions. What's the future for Brian McAniff? Is it a good time to say, well listen, there you are, 20 Donegal, I've got it for you, I can do no more, leave me in peace or uh, another three year tenure and uh, the same headaches? Well, I don't know about that, Charlie. I, I'll go home and I'll, I'll talk to my good woman at home. Uh, you know, I have my own views on it at the minute, which I wouldn't like to express because it would be a very weak time to express ones, particularly after winning in All-Ireland. But I did miss a couple of people that I would like to say a thank you to. Anthony Harkin for the shape that the boys were out there today. A lot of people said that Anthony hadn't been fit enough last year. We were fit enough, our attitude wasn't right. But this year we dug deeper after the defeat against the Dubs in Canton and we said that we've, we had sunk as low as we could. And from here on, we were going to dig very deep in our own character and our own fitness. And I'd like to thank the backup lads of Michael Lafferty, Seamus Boner and our chairman, Noel McCall. And to the other gales that are not involved, but on the periphery, the executive, the supporters and the county board at large, you know, and those people in the past that have been involved, such as Charlie Faulkner and Francie Cunningham and Anne Bart Whelan that I met out there today. And I'd like to say to them a thank you because they they done their bit as well. And, and Tom Conan and PJ McGowan, who gained a two on under-21 All-Ireland teams to success, to the vocational schools, to the men of vision back in 78, 79, that under, brought an under-16 team here to play in North Dublin selection. They were men of vision on the minor board. And, like, I'm reaping the benefit, but the work was done those years back, and I'm, all I'm doing is just guiding it a little further along the line. <laughs> hey, tell me that, tell me that. And for George Gibbon... And the family says congratulations from George Givens and the family. Congratulations as well. Now, if you were tuned on there a few about 10, 15 minutes ago, you would have heard, hopefully now, hopefully as we speak now, we're back in line. No, we're not back in line one, but we'll hang on on there again. Uh, we'll keep trying. We'll keep trying because, as I said, they're, they are on the move on the bus, maybe. At this hello, spot. Brendan. Ah, hello there, Packy. Yeah. How you doing? Packy on the wireless. How you getting on? I'm t- <laughs> uh, you know, uh, well, you see, it's, I'm chatting away here to myself, you see. But <laughs> how's the form now? Great, great, Brendan. Are you still in Bound Trap? We're still in Bound Trap. We're in the community centre and it's packed jam tight. That's going to be a People session there. What we the atmosphere there when Matt Keller brought in the... I would say Matt McGuire now, if not a man near tears, uh, he would have been near tears, yeah, I'm nearly very, sure. very, very emotional. And mm. the hugging that he got going through the door, I don't know how he survived. Ah, uh, you know. great so, uh, 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 You know, when you think about it too, the abuse uh, all the boys will be getting now. Uh, not not the mean abuse in, in that uh, sense, like, but... Mm. I mean, it's it's just general. It does good wishes that the people are trying to get to get out there on them, you know. That's right. And everybody wants to have a wee sort of squeeze and a wee shake of the hands, and you know, just to touch them to fellas, touch like them. you know, so because I mean, history doesn't come around while often. That's right. And it's not right. while often that we be a part of history, like oh, you know. And Bondone, they were just trying to get a touch on the players, you know, mm. before they before they back into the bus. You know, that we, we, we witnessed scenes like that in Dublin after the, the, the Irish team came back from the World Cup. But, like, you know, it's like everything else, Pac, it was away in Dublin. You've seen it on television. That's I suppose right. it was great at the time. Yeah. But now it's, it's, all, like, it's there. And, 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 and we're it's sort of... Going, in our own county. And, you know, you know, you're inclined to call it unreal, as Matt did there before he arrived in the town. But as Anthony Harkin reminded him, it's real, it is real. But it, it is real. But, but it it's is. just unbelievable. It's, hard, it's, it's hard to sink in, I suppose. That's right. We fellas that, okay, that have been used to sort of biggish crowds over the last several months, and we there, but, um, and, but, like, suddenly to be to be faced by walls and walls of people, and, and them all in the same colours and right. shouting the same thing towards that's them, like, you know. Euphoria, just. That's, that's, euphoria. that's totally, you know, to, to, for them to, to, to take it all on. It's going to take them a long time to take it all on. It is, it is. I was talking to the boys just when they arrived in Sligo, and it was only really hitting them when they arrived there that the thing had happened, you know. Mm. Tell me, Packy, we, we, we had a per- somebody on the phone to say, are are the team going with Sam to Ardmore? Oh, that's a good question. Now, there's, uh, there's, there's one for you to uh, ask, can we? That's right. Oh, right. Dude, I'm sure they will. I'm yeah. sure they will. That's uh, one for them to refer to. Like, yeah. You know yourself, if they go to Ardmore, it's, a, it's yeah. a week at least. And by the way, Brian McEnough assured me that he is going to bring it over Lefford Bridge. <laughs> well, I'll be, the, I'll be there to give him a hand. <laughs> Because like I said, I was saying to Charlie earlier on there, I came across last night with my own wee green cup. Yeah. That's the only one I had. Only, you I think you it, got over with you, Brendan. It might have been the only one I came across last night, anyway. Like, you I think know. Kevin Doherty got the, got the banner uh, changed there. It got torn during the week, but he has a new one up there, Brendan. Packy. 
Packy, the new one's gone. <laughs> oh, don't tell me, man. <laughs> That's what's going for a day. These uh, things happen, Brent. This is it. You see, you're, 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 you've been down since when? Saturday, is it? Uh, no, Friday? yesterday morning, I believe it. seems like two days right now. Yeah. But I passed your uh, young boys on the way up yesterday or last night. Is that right? I passed them, or they passed me, actually, in yeah. Monaghan or somewhere. Can you mind? I was, right. I was that busy looking at flags and people yeah. waving at us. And, yeah. and, and you know, it was totally weans out for mal. Like, yeah. the whole route, the whole route mm. up, like, you know. Oh, um, the, the night, the night... And Donegal, well, it's going to be non-stop. That's right, that's right. Uh, for anybody who's up there... as a Really big finale. So the last day I was here, Brenton, was the, the, I was here with the Clare team, and I'm, I'm sure they're delighted for Donegal winning the All-Ireland, and they'd wish them uh, well, you know, that day that they came up to play the, the challenge game right. for the opening of the Nave Bridge mm. New Park, you know, so that's, uh, it's great to be back here a few weeks later with the Sam Maguire, you know. Awesome. I mean, <laughs> again, it's that stuff uh, that only dreams were made of. Like. That's right. So what's Brenton, happening now, Packy? Brenton, they're still in there. Uh, they went in. They said they're only going to spend 15, 20 minutes. <laughs> uh, uh, boy. Although, you know, they're not very far off schedule because they were, they're, they're, well, there's about an hour, really. They were they, they were to be in Donegal Town at half 12, and I know now it's 20 minutes to 2, but mm. considering everything they've had to come through, and it's been very difficult here for Fancy and the bus. It, and it must have been, job, like, you know? to come through that many mm. people, especially uh, on the Lake uh, of Bundorn. That's right. You know, when, when the streets are when the streets are kind of tight, mm. anyway, to get through at any time. Well, like. you know, very big enough to appeal to them there in Bundorn, and fair play to the people, they, they took heed of it, you know, to watch mm. the children and all that sort of thing. So all the euphoria is there, like it could be easy. Mm. Having somebody on the side of the bus, you know, but it's great. Ah, great. As, as long as as long right. as nothing nothing bad can no, that does happen. Right. Listen, uh, from well, Baltra, yeah. uh, is it a straight run into Donegal? It is, it is. I uh, straight into Donegal. That's the final one. And uh, as soon as we're leaving here, Benton, we'll come back to you. Right, the lines are brave and you know, buzzy anyway, Pack. I know they are. I'm yeah. having trouble getting through there a few times, you know. But right, up, up. Up we don't well we will get back to you definitely before that like right. but uh it'll take you say when you leave Baltra how long do you think will it be? Well it's only it's only a few miles really but um uh, I'm sure it'll, well you're talking about fifteen minutes I would think mm. just to be. Tell me, Paggy, yeah, are, uh, are they a big cavalcade kid following the bus? Oh, there's a massive amount of people out there. Mm. Massive. And they're and, all coming. Uh, I think all the people that were in Bundorn, I would say that most of them are all <laughs> headed on to Donegal <laughs> Town now again. My God. You know because. I'm sure that's going to be another big one there. Well, it was, uh, everything's everything's looking yeah. good, as the weather's good, and and mm. everything's be, uh, behaving itself no, well. Been, and and mm. you know what? It's, 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 it's been fantastic, Brenton. Everything's hope, gone so well for everything. Has it been filmed? I wonder. There are the RTs on the bus here with us. Are they? Indeed? They are, and uh, I know there's a video commission by the supporters club or the county board themselves. In fact, they would asked me to do the video, but been involved in this game here. I couldn't take it on board. Right. Uh, but uh, they have commissioned a company to video all events leading up to the final there for the mm -hmm. last few days. And, of course, all this tonight, and then it'll be a souvenir video. So that'll be something to look forward to. Now that will be something. But there's video cameras out everywhere. Well, this is <laughs> it. That's a, Lego, but, like, but like mm -hmm. saying, Paggy, for the like of us that are, mm -hmm. are left you know, at, at, at home and for uh, people that just could not get to Donegal and there are quite a lot of people who just could not get away to Donegal the night. Like, that's right. And that's like right. like myself and, and a lot of other people yeah. know exactly what the atmosphere is going because we were all up there for the semi-final return. That's right. And we and we seen what the atmosphere was like yeah. that night. That's right. Uh, that's and right. we knew exactly what, uh, ten, a hundred uh, times better than that's night. That's right. You know? so, all uh, like, right then, Brenton, we're not... We're not holding any longer. Sure. Well, I'll tell you uh, what, I'm, I'm, the piece of music that I'm playing now, actually, is I was going to dedicate to all the singers on the uh, bus because it's a, it's a thing from uh, Megan and Clancy called The Place in the Choir. Right. I see Marley is laughing here. Uh, <laughs> well, <laughs> Francie, get... Francie, you want to play this for somebody special? Anybody at home there, Francie, you want to request? I'll play for all at home that's uh, not able to make it to any gold time. And uh, for all them and good supporters of Glen Fun, we'll be there to see you sometime. There you are. Yeah. There we are. That's Fancy Marley, the most favourite. That's that's that's, here that's actually the main man. Aye, the main man. After after Brian, he'd be the main man. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Did he get a medal too? <laughs> <laughs> right. All right. Okay, Braden. We'll, well, we'll give you. We'll get back to you when we're leaving. Bound. Good stuff, Paggy. Right. Enjoy it. Yeah. Bye bye. Right. See you bye. Back. There you go.
That's them still in Ballantra, folks out there. They're in the community centre in Ballantra, of course, Matt, and they're celebrating like mighty. The form is excellent. Everybody's in great form. Even though it is coming up to quarter to two o'clock in the morning, I know. <laughs> what is time? What is time when, when you're enjoying a, a, a situation like this? Uh, congratulations to Anthony Harkin, is it? Uh, from the Sweeney family in Port Salon for Magellan, the sister. And also congratulations from Jim Patton uh, and best wishes, it says, and Bolly Walsh as well. And congratulations from Caldwell Tires and Sternorder and also from Bernard McGuinness. Congratulations uh, from the north of the county, it says there, that team. Right, that's, that's enough for the congratulations. There's more coming in as we speak. But anyway, this is dedicated to all the people who are left on the bus who didn't get a chance to sing the first time Margot came around. You can, you can join in with this one. Don't we? All God's creatures got a place in the choir. Some sing low and some sing higher. Some sing out loud on the telephone wire. Some just clap their hands or paws or anything they got now. All God's creatures got a place in the choir. Some sing low and some sing higher. Some sing out loud on the telephone wire. Some just clap their hands or paws or anything they got now. It's 5.30. This is Highland Radio News with Donald Kavanagh. Good evening. In this bulletin, emotional scenes greeted Sam Maguire last night as he finally crossed into Donegal. Over 15,000 supporters waited in the Diamond in Donegal Town until the team and its entourage escorted Donegal's most prestigious visitor into the town. In other news, a 34-year-old dairyman has been sentenced to five years' imprisonment for the manslaughter of his wife in Grey Steel in March of this year. And the North's economy minister says that Dungannon's proposed link road will not be built in the near future. But we begin, of course, with the scenes which greeted Sam Maguire last night. The Sam Maguire Cup and the Donegal team arrived back in Donegal to a tumultuous welcome from over 15,000 fans who lined the streets of Donegal town for another glimpse of their heroes. The trophy was carried onto Donegal soil by team captain Anthony Malloy and manager Brian McAniff as they crossed over the bridge at the River Drowse on the outskirts of Bondoran. Bonfires blazed on the surrounding hills as thousands of fans gathered to give a special welcome to the team that made history at Croke Park on Sunday. Earlier, the squad were given an official welcome when they arrived in Sligo from Dublin on a special executive train laid on by Erin Roth Aaron. The train was delayed by fans in County Leitrim who came onto the line at Drummond and held it up for over half an hour. After being greeted by over 7,000 people in Sligo, the team coach then travelled on through Bondoran, Ballyshannon and Ballantra until it reached the Diamond in Donegal Town in the early hours of this morning. Over 15,000 people were waiting for the team in Donegal Town when they finally arrived, almost two hours late. Approximately 6,000 people had greeted them at each previous stop. However, the general consensus was in Donegal Town this morning that it was worth the wait when a horse, Anthony Malloy, greeted the Donegal supporters and told them he was proud to bring Sam back to where it really belongs. Again, yes, lad. Yes. Much of the all. I'm definitely a very proud man to come here tonight and I'm very privileged to bring Sam back to where it belongs. I have a whole lot of people to thank for making this great occasion. I start just by thanking the players on my own behalf. They're a great bunch of lads. Um, there's a closeness amongst us. Uh, they're second and known. And I think that showed out there yesterday in, in Crow Park. I'd also like to thank our own county board who have been a great help to us all year and our supporters club who, have, who has taken in a lot of money for the training fund. Thanks very much. Once again, I'd just like to thank our mentors and I'll mention them all again. Mickey Lafferty, <laughs> Seamus Bonner, Noel McCall and Anthony Harkin. A trainer, Anthony Hagen, 
I was in great condition there yesterday. This is also. I now would like to thank uh, the man himself, Brian McEnough. Give him a big hand there. And I must say a very special word of thanks to him for taking me back out of the wilderness last year. And I'll never forget him for that. Thanks very much, Brian. And another man I must thank also, and that's Tom Conan. Um, way back about 10 years ago, I wasn't playing on the 21 level at the time, and he asked me in for a second round match, and he guaranteed me an all Ireland medal that year as well. Thanks very much, Tom. Um, I, f I forgot to thank our physios, Karen Crawford again, and Angela McManaman, and uh, Katrina Fitzpatrick, and of course, I have to say a very big thank you to Dr. Austin Kennedy, who has done a lot for me in my injuries, and he's done a lot for the team in general. Thanks very much, Austin. And of course, I cannot forget yourselves out there, the greatest supporters in Ireland. <laughs> Not alone were you brilliant last Sunday. You have been great to us down the years, the good times and the bad times. Thanks very much. And I'd also like to thank, again, my own wife and family. And I'm saying this to you on behalf of all the, the entire Donegal squad, on behalf of all their wives and dear friends for their patience all year with us. Thanks very much. And words cannot des uh, describe how I feel right now, but and it's really unbelievable what's happening here today. And I just finish off by thanking you all for turning out here tonight and giving us a great homecoming. Thanks very much. A very hoarse but nonetheless jubilant Anthony Malloy, Donegal team captain. Team manager Brian McAniff told the crowd congregated in the Diamonds in Donegal town last night that the long wait was finally over. People of Donegal. The waiting's over. Sam is here. The day after the Dubs beat us in Breffney, we went out to pitch here to the rugby grounds. We trained on Monday night in the mud and the rain, and we vowed for you people. And we spoke about it many times since. We spoke about it in the dressing room before we went out. We spoke about it at half time. We knew what would be here tonight, and the boys delivered, and fair play to them. Anthony led a great side yesterday, and although only 16 played in the park, I can assure you that there was 26 players involved, and everyone gave up themselves very willingly for the last seven months. And to them I say, thank you. I could talk all night, but there are things that have to be said, and now's the time to say them. Anthony Harkin took a lot of flack, as I said last night, because he felt, he felt he, the team wasn't fit. Well, you saw yesterday how fit they were. We ran them out of Croke Park. <laughs> yesterday was a great day to be a Donegal man. And tonight, you've showed your thanks to us in a very big way. And on behalf of the players and myself and the backroom staff and the county board, I'd like to say uh, thank you for waiting so late. And be very careful on the way home. And I hope that this will be the first of many trips to Cope Park. Donegal team manager Brian McAniff. Meanwhile, Garvey and Donegal have reiterated their warning to pedestrians and motorists to exercise consideration and caution during the next few days of celebrations. 
Inspector Jim Connor from Ballyshannon, however, praised those who had gathered in South Donegal for their good behaviour last night. Well, it was a wonderful occasion, Mary, and uh, on behalf of the Gardaí in Ballyshannon district, I would like to say that we were very pleased at the way events unfolded on this magnificent occasion. Despite the fact that supporters turned out in their tens of thousands, no incident of an untoward nature occurred. We are thankful in <coughs> particular for the splendid help and cooperation we received from civil defence and from stewards of the various GAA clubs and from ambulance crews present. They were of great assistance to us throughout the night. Now I should like to compliment the general public for cooperating with traffic restrictions and diversions which we found it necessary to impose on the occasion. Now, and I'm sure <coughs> anyone affected will appreciate that we were acting in the best interests of the safety and the general enjoyment of those taking part on this great occasion. Inspector Jim Connor, the team have been touring South West Donegal this afternoon, starting at Pettigo at 2 o'clock this afternoon. They're due in Killy Beggs for tea about now, and then go on to Kilcar, Glencullum Kill and Ardra, where there will be a victory function. Diversions will be in place around Ardra from 7 o'clock. Garthi have appealed to motorists to avoid the town unless they have urgent business. Derry City Council's Marketing and Tourism Committee have sent their congratulations to the Donegal manager Brian McAniff and his team. Chairman John Kerr said the victory was a wonderful achievement. He also passed on the council's sympathy to the family of Seamus Braid, the Donegal fan who died after a fracas in Dublin yesterday morning. And there have been calls for more Garda patrols in Dublin city centre following the killing of Seamus Braid on O'Connell Street. The 25-year-old native of Downings who has been living in London for the past five years was found dead on arrival at the Matter Hospital after Garthi found him lying on the pavement with severe head injuries. Democratic left spokesperson on Justice Eamon Gilmore called for an increase in Garda personnel and extra resources for Dublin following the attack. Deputy Gilmore said that the most effective way of combating crime is to get the Garthi out onto the streets. He added that he was not looking for extra Garthi for Dublin at the expense of rural areas, but said that extra Garthi must be recruited. Today, hundreds of floral tributes have been laid at the junction of Cathedral Street and O'Connell Street Upper in memory of Seamus Braid. A parade in honour of the Dublin football team last night observed a minute's silence at the location of the attack. And the Donegal County GAA Board has appealed to retailers and shop owners to stock and sell only official county board merchandise. The board has asked for the cooperation of all businesses in Donegal to adhere to the request. Official team posters and frame photographs have been issued. They will be retailing in shops across the county. And from GAA to today's other news, a three-year-old girl from Ballandrate has died after falling into a pool of water at Drumboy outside Lifford. The accident occurred yesterday afternoon when the girl's family was visiting friends. Danielle Malach of Geistown in Ballandrate was playing with a friend when she toppled into the pool of water. A 34-years-old County Derry man has been sentenced to five years imprisonment at the local Crown Court for the manslaughter of his wife in March this year. Bricklayer William James O'Hara of Dunlade Road, Grey Steel, had denied murdering his 26-year-old wife, Margaret Ann, but admitted manslaughter on the grounds of diminished responsibility. Accepting the plea to the letter charge, the prosecutor said that although medical evidence showed O'Hara was suffering from depression brought on by the discovery of his wife having an affair, he had carried out a brutal killing. Imposing sentence, Lord Justice McDermott said medical reports proved O'Hara's mind had been substantially impaired at the time, but jealousy was no justification for killing his wife. The court heard post-mortem reports showed that Mrs O'Hara, a mother of two, died from drowning and had been struck on the head four times with a hammer. The directors of Derry City Football Club, along with manager Roy Coyle, met last night to consider the transfer requests from eight players following a dispute over bonuses. A statement from the club said that directors have decided unanimously on a course of action but have refused to reveal further information until all players have been notified of the board's decision. A teenage meat plant worker is still seriously ill in hospital after a shooting incident in Dungannon yesterday. 
the man who was working at an abattoir sustained gunshot wounds to the head from a gun used for the humane killing of animals. The man was found by colleagues earlier that afternoon and was taken to the South Tyrone Hospital. It's understood that a crime is not suspected. The North's Economy Minister Robert Atkins has dashed hopes of an early start to the town's new proposed link road when he spoke this afternoon in Dungannon. Speaking to councillors earlier today, he said that the work is not included on the department's five-year plan for Dungannon, as Francis Money now reports. Mr Atkins told disappointed local councillors during a visit to Dungannon today that funds are not available to include the road in the road services five-year programme. But Council Chairman Vincent Curry says he's nevertheless confident Mr Atkins will rethink the decision. So impressed was he by what he saw in the town. Mr Curry, who accompanied Mr Atkins on a tour of Dungannon, said the minister had been shown clearly that private enterprise can be relied upon to react to government funding, as he witnessed for himself on the streets of Dungannon. Mr Atkins did assure local councillors that the Department of the Environment hopes to acquire the necessary land which will allow sites to be cleared in preparation for work to begin on the new road, which will link William Street to Thomas Street. He congratulated the council on the vigorous and creative role it's playing in the obvious progress being made in Dungannon, and assured councillors that both he and the department will continue to offer cooperation and support wherever possible in its future development. Francis Mooney for Highland Radio News. We've just heard in the newsroom that the remains of 25-year-old Seamus Braid, who died in Dublin on the early hours of Monday morning, are en route to Donegal from the capital. The remains are due to arrive in Letterkenny between 8 and half past 8 this evening. The Western Health and Social Services Board's booklet, Better Care, Your Charter for Health and Social Services, was launched in Derry this afternoon. The Western Board Chairman Robert Toland told the launch at area headquarters at Grancha Park that the Charter, copies of which will be distributed to homes in the board area, lays out the rights and entitlements of people in the area and sets the standards of care which they can expect to receive. Donegal County Council has announced that diversions will be in operation at Drumfin today and tomorrow to allow for emergency bridge works in the area. The road will be closed from the Termin Junction and the between the Termin Junction and the Lossett Junction on the Glenvay side of the Glenvay Inn. Diversion signs have been posted. Drivers have been advised to use alternative routes where possible. Homeless people in the northwest now have the option of living in a hostel in Strathfoyle in Derry while they find suitable accommodation, according to a statement released by the Northern Ireland Housing Executive. The new hostel for the homeless at Moy Glass which was officially opened by Elaine Watterson, Housing Executive Board Member, and Alan Bradshaw, the Housing Executive's Regional Director, yesterday afternoon, consists of a row of ten houses and is the first of its kind in the northwest. The houses are a mixture of three- and four-bedroom units, ideal for families. Two hotel assistants will provide a 24-hour cover and offer advice and assistance to the occupants. Derry City is to host a number of major popular arts events when four festivals in one are held there next month. Oktoberfest, which is part of the city's Impact 92 celebrations, will include comedy, jazz, international theatre, choral, musical and outdoor spectacles. At the launch of the programme, Councillor Noel McKenna, chairman of Impact 92, said that the year's events had intensified Derry's reputation as a place of excellence and achievement. He said that around 60,000 people had attended events in the first six months of the event. Oktoberfest will compromise a festival of comedy, a jazz festival, a two cathedrals music festival with a chorus of about 100 and a festival of world theatre. Colthus on the Craigan has urged people in Derry to participate in the Irish language lessons it has launched for beginners and new beginners this autumn. A spokesman for Colthus on Craigan said that lessons will be held at the Colthus offices in Craigan on Tuesday nights and new students will be welcome until the end of this month. Colthus on Craigan is a local branch of the Irish traditional music organisation Colthus Coltoriaren. The organisation aims to promote the learning and use of Irish language and also traditional arts such as Celtic design. And finally, the Derry branch of the Lions Club have begun organising the preliminary heats of the 1993 Entertainer of the Year talent competition organised throughout Ireland by RTE and the Lions Club. Three competitors from the North West figured among the finalists last year and the Londonderry Lions Club now want prospective entrants for next year to send entries to their base at the Everglades Hotel 
in the city. And that's Highland Radio News for this evening, taking a closing look now at today's Northwest headlines. Emotional scenes greeted Sam Maguire last night as he finally crossed into Donegal. Over 15,000 supporters waited in the Diamond in Donegal town until the team and its entourage escorted Donegal's most famous visitor into the town. A 34-years-old County Derryman has been sentenced to five years imprisonment at the local Crown Court for the manslaughter of his wife in March of this year. Bricklayer William James O'Hara of Dunlade Road in Grey Steel had denied murdering his 26-year-old wife, Margaret Ann, but admitted manslaughter on the grounds of diminished responsibility. And the North's Economy Minister, Robert Atkins, has dashed hopes of an early start to Dungannon's proposed new link road. Speaking to councillors earlier today, he said that the work is not included on the department's five-year plan for Dungannon. And that's Helen Radio News. We're back with news at seven. Until then, good evening. And we have two obituary notices for this evening, the 22nd of September. The death has occurred of Danielle Malloch at Letterkenny General Hospital, darling daughter of Eamon and Anne, and loving sister of Michael of Liskey Ballandrate. Her funeral will leave her parents' home on Thursday at 10.20 in the morning for Mass of the Angels in St. Patrick's Church, Murloch, at 11am, with interment immediately afterwards at the adjoining cemetery. Danielle is deeply regretted by her loving mummy, daddy, brother and relatives. And the death occurred this morning of Mrs Violet Ingram, Drumahoe Letter Kenny. She is survived by her husband Charlie and son Noel at Drumahoe and daughter Mrs Vivian Irwin Remelton and by her sisters Mary, Ruby and Martha. Her funeral will leave Drumahoe at two o'clock on Thursday to Gortley Cemetery. <laughs> Congratulations Donegal, you have done us proud with your first ever All-Ireland victory. Well done from the classic team, classic home interiors, Oma, Letterkenny, Derry and Sligo. Here's what farmers are saying about new PMPA farm protection. I think it's an excellent idea that a farmer can pick and choose because nobody knows better what he needs.